Uh, <laughs> we are live. I th I think we're live. Let's let's see what the chat says okay. before we switch cameras. Fifteen seconds delay. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a bit of a delay. So happy. There's there's a bunch of happy New Year's here in chat. Yeah, happy New happy Year to you as well. Now there's an uwu. And also, I just got a notification on my phone, so I think we're live. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. First hello. I, be I believe the first hello. Hello. Okay. Let's switch cameras then. Hello, Jaisa and Souls. There <laughs> we go. Hello. Welcome to the stream. First stream in the year. Yeah, and first stream since the year. On YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Last time we streamed on YouTube, it was in kind of the same uh, constellation. Yeah, because um, last year we also had a guest that was very spontaneously. And now uh, it's not as spontaneous. <laughs> <laughs> this time it was planned, yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, let's say hello to our guest. Um, Hello to all guests. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hi there, hi there. I, I'm I'm very stoked to be here. I think last time, barely anyone knew me, <laughs> so <laughs> maybe this time I do have like one or two people uh, that knew me beforehand before I appeared here. But I'm I'm super stoked and super happy uh, to be here again. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean you have. Um grown your English channel since last year quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Like, uh, I, I, th I think it was like I started out with uh, four or five thousand subscribers. Now I passed the uh, 200,000 mark. Wow. So, yeah, that's, Congrats. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, that's that's quite a bit. Yeah, but, uh, but thanks for the applause. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, yeah, no, it's it's awesome. I, I think uh, I, I know how um, last year we weren't really sure like what to put there, like the German or the English one, and now it makes sense. <laughs> also to talk English and stuff like that. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. But but I think I think pr uh, people don't know that uh, we don't know each other since like one or two years. It's been like a bit more than that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the first 2017, 2018. Yeah, I, I also thought like Dokumi 2017. <laughs> <laughs> That's like four or five years. Wow. Wow, time flies. <sighs> it doesn't feel like that even. It's, it's amazing. Oh, yeah, getting old. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, dear chat, please let us know uh, if the volume's all right, if we're all um, almost on the yep. same level and how music is, because I, I got a little mixer right here, so this time around I can quickly fix things. Because I remember last time, like halfway through the stream, we're like, so uh, is, is the music loud enough? And people were like, what music? So <laughs> this time around, I can hear it, so I think it's, I think it's there. Uh, yeah, um, so about the motif I'm painting. Yeah, what are we doing today? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, um, came up with the idea pretty um, quickly. Um, so there's not as much thought in this as I would like to, but um, I had the post down and then I thought, well, he would have to have a reason why he's looking there. And then I thought I add some birds there. Just because someone in chat said uh, it's like a Disney prince as <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, by the way, uh, Lau has the chat right in front of him, yeah, which no, is I nice. Read it. So, uh, I, I just call you Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> People in chat have been calling him Marcel, so I think that's fine. I was like, draw, draw, no. Yeah. Also, you, you, uh, you introduce yourself as Marcel in your own videos, don't you? Yeah, 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 like that. I, That's cool. Um, I I always say Marcel because I just don't like people. I I, I, know I don't like different. people. I get that. I also don't <laughs> like people. 
<laughs> clip that. <laughs> yeah, first and foremost, yeah. But I, um, I, I, I know it's different with you guys, but I kind of hate it when people uh, talk to me as, you know, draw like a sir. That's, I know, do, I don't know, do people talk to you guys as Laovan and Ecolox? They Probably definitely do. Sometimes. Yes, they do. Uh... But I think that's a little different because... Um, with those, like those are more like names, whereas drawing like a sir or draw like a sir sounds more like a show, right? It's so bit, yeah. you're yeah, Marcel, like, and you do this show called Draw Like a Sir. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 kind of weird, like like calling MatPat Game Theory or calling right. Son Goku mm -hmm. Dragon Ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> calling Ling Zelda. Yeah, that, that's why that's why I that's why I introduce myself as Marcel because I just fancy um I just I just fancy being called by my actual name. <laughs> I remember when I um, first, so my first username was Kite, and my brother, uh, twin brother was named Kier, um, where it was kind of like, uh, yeah, random that we both picked a name with, uh, starting with a K, but um, that was quite confusing for a lot of people at conventions, I guess, <laughs> at a certain <laughs> point. And then I also thought like, okay, no, I, I don't really want to be referred to as Kite because, uh, I don't know, it always sounded like uh, we were role-playing or stuff like that. Like when you get called by a nickname, I don't know, that was weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I kind of... Uh, was that the reason uh, why you changed your name back in the day? The reason was kind of more that um, I had a DeviantArt account and um, that one is from 2009, I think. And that one was like English from the get-go. So Animex was like the German persona. Uh, so Kite there was the persona. And that's what uh, I also went on German conventions. And um, then slowly after like having started the YouTube channel in 2012, um, it kind of shifted more towards Laovan, but ever so slowly, like really, really slowly. Yes. I think it's still since, uh, I guess, it, yeah, 2016, 17. Yeah, that's, was the that's sh main shift. Yeah. Uh, the, the Facebook page remains Kite. Yeah. Because uh, Facebook won't let you rename it, because then they're like, oh, but that's a different person. And we're like, no, it's not. No. <laughs> Same person. Can can we please rename the page? No, you can't. You, you could. We could change the URL, right? It's Facebook.com/slash/laovan, but then you go there and it's kite, and it's like, yeah, confusing. But what else? That was. Yeah, but I think you can you can still recognize the drawing style. So yes. I I don't yeah. think most people, uh, most people are scared off by that. I think you still recognize the art style. <laughs> so subscribe either way. I mean, I, I had some people like uh, writing me uh, DMs on Facebook asking whether I had permission to repost that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, but but then I can explain. Uh, on the other hand, also I often think like, okay, I'll post there some stuff that's like not really um, posted somewhere else sometimes, and then yeah, I think people can assume that that it's it's me. But also Facebook, who does use that anymore? <laughs> I mean, you do say that, but it still has yeah. significant, <laughs> like a significant user base, right? I think. Uh, I mean, I I had no idea. Like, um, I I did uh, um, a little short video about drawing teeth from the last tutorial video, and mm. that one kind of. Um, worked really well on Facebook. Like no other platform <laughs> but Facebook. <laughs> Facebook's <laughs> algorithm shows that one to be the one. Um, yeah. And that's when I noticed, okay, there are some people still using Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people are kind of underestimating it, I think, because uh, because Facebook, uh, you, you still need Facebook in order to promote ads on Instagram, I think. Yes, I'm not quite sure about true. that, but, uh, but but Facebook is like the hub service. So I think I think it's used quite a lot, maybe not in Germany, but I think in, in the USA, lots of people, because they don't use WhatsApp or something, so I think most of them use like the Facebook Messenger or something. 
I mean, I can see that. Uh, it's also um, like Facebook is often still in the headlines. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, why I would yeah. assume like, okay, they, they, there has to be some relevancy. But I also think like with um, other countries uh, like, like India or more like Eastern countries. This, this reminds me of a common question that we used to get in the live streams like a few years ago, which was, if you were to start out as an artist now, let, let's let's say like let's say you're already producing pretty good stuff, but where would you start posting it to grow, like, like social media profile or whatever? Like that's difficult. No, yeah, wh where would you start today? Because algorithms shifting all the time, like attention shifting all the time. A few years ago, TikTok wasn't a thing, for example. Like there's new platforms, old platforms die. I definitely wouldn't start with a Facebook page today, but maybe that is still totally uh, valid way of doing it. I don't know. What would you say, Marcel? I mean, it also kind of depends on the, the kind of art you're making. Like, for example, um, you and I, or, or like all the three of us, are still quite, uh, kind of good with video editing, but if, like, like Rehan, for example, she, she seldomly posts videos, so mm. she's more on Instagram than on TikTok, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the thing is, I think with uh, the shift that Instagram also does, like the, the video aspect kind of, it gets more... I think everything is moving towards video. Yeah. 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 That's why TikTok makes it so easy to create any sort of video, which to their credit, they have pretty good tools. I still yeah. not gonna join that platform, but it's, it's, it's yeah, good tools. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm... Uh, I'm I'm with you on that. It's it's uh, TikTok's such a such a double-edged sword because of course it generates a, like huge amount of attention, but I think the downsides are also pretty big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if I I use TikTok for for a short amount of time, like in private, and it, it kind of destroyed my attention span. Oh wow. It, it obliterated like i uh, i think like uh, after a couple of hours i've i've watched some of them and i i came to the point where where i got bored of 10 second videos where oh. i wasn't even <laughs> listening to the punchline because i got bored so fast so i swiped for the next one i yeah, i try to to use tiktok as a, a user uh I, I really try to do that sometimes, but <laughs> I, I never seem to be able to like, okay, because there are not as many artists there compared to like Instagram. And so my feed is like mainly um, the For You page. And that one, I don't know where they pick the videos from, but I have like no interest in, in just watching like these um yeah, I don't know, like sometimes it's uh, religious stuff and I don't know, it's weird. And then I thought, okay, no, I, I'll probably just use it as a way to post videos there because I think I, I like the way that you can edit videos on the app. <laughs> that one uh, is, is um, I think TikTok is really at its best. Yeah, I, I gotta be honest, I still edit <laughs> TikTok <laughs> videos in Premiere. <laughs> That's the way to do it. <laughs> it's it's um, valid. Yeah. yeah. I, because because I I just don't like the way TikTok. I, I I'm used to Premiere, so that's why I stick to it. That's why I just added it on my PC and then I transfer it over to my mobile phone and then I upload it to TikTok, which is incredibly time-consuming. But I I'm just more comfortable with that. I mean that that's what uh, where where I also thought like okay if I I mean sometimes like for for little shorts of full videos I I use the Premiere um, thing because it already exists like with all the um, files there but on um, TikTok like doing stuff with um, yeah drawing in front of me or something like that and it's like okay I'll, I'll just cut it later there. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, there's so many people have already uh, mentioned your <laughs> your body pillow. You were... Yes, I was about to bring that up. Yeah, there's lot, lots of questions yes, around is, Darius and true. the body pillow as well. Just make sure you don't turn that yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. yeah, make sure not to flip it. Yeah. That, that's something uh, where I thought like TikTok was weird. I um, do 
stuff that's for adults, like art wise. And sometimes. Sometimes. And <laughs> um, you, on the internet, you have to be really careful. Obviously, for obvious reasons, uh, where you upload that stuff. Um, on TikTok, though, like, I've seen kind of like 10 people just reposting like that uh, uncensored version of an artwork dancing in front of the crotch or something <laughs> yeah basically they they are themselves the censoring method of that image yeah and not even good ones because you can still <laughs> often just tell what's underneath and um yeah that, that's something where i thought okay i once did like an art versus artist video where it was just like a bunch of pictures and photos and they got um like flagged down <laughs> But there are millions of views on, on my Nazi for work stuff re-uploaded by other people on TikTok, which is weird. And often I'm not even sure like if I want to be like credited probably uh, properly because I thought like okay I don't want these kids to go on my Twitter page. <laughs> <laughs> I've had like the same the same problem with my Discord. Any every time I mentioned it in a video, uh, or pushed it in a video, like, it, it's just the same problem occurred. That you know, kids came over and kind of disturbed the peace. <laughs> <laughs> it really makes you think like uh, twice about okay, um, am I risking this now? And, and considering like what is the Discord? Um, yeah, what is it for? Like, do I want to have? A lot of action there, or do I want to have like quality people? <laughs> quality people, yeah. Yeah, like like Jaisa and Souls and Shed, yeah. for example. <laughs> where is asking why would you where, put where, where body is, And somebody's asking where is Draw like a sir? Where are you? Where are you even? I'm <laughs> in fact at home. <laughs> nice. I hope you're comfortable. You know what, stay at home and stuff. Yeah. We're doing the uh, proper socially distanced live stream. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise we would have gotten him here. We would have paid him an Uber and all that. <laughs> yeah, an Uber, like like several hours <laughs> away. I think an it's Uber a business expense. Expensive. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys are rich anyway, right? Yeah, I'm apparently totally. we're rich, uh, according to that one wiki, not wiki, that one uh, like famous artist.com, whatever. You're like a millionaire or something. Yeah. 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 I also studied in, in Düsseldorf. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. I mean, it's, it's common knowledge that every not safe for work artist is like rich, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, some are. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Sakiwicha started the trend where you think like, okay, that's an option. <laughs> yeah. And then you started making the same things as well. <laughs> I mean, for me, it was kind of like I wanted to do a comic book, but I wanted to have like fun with it. And as I'm not like that storyteller, I thought, okay, what could be more fun than drawing like these action scenes? But the story in your comic is so deep. It's beyond, yeah. Um, and then I thought, okay, no, you construct something around the action and then... Um, action. <laughs> yeah then it keeps you motivated to work towards that that was kind of the way i got into it because i thought otherwise i've i've tried to think about like complicated stories and um what i thought of using this character for for example <laughs> is kind of like complicated um i know what you're gonna use him for <laughs> yeah. we all know it he's <laughs> already been doing it the comic it's isn't even started it, it has also to do with like motivation but um no that's uh that's why i haven't started doing another <laughs> comic yet because i don't want it to be like just not safe for work this time i want it to be it to be a, a story or like at least like character studies mm. whatever and it's gonna be playing in the matrix universe if i remember correctly obviously <laughs> <laughs> i'm talking bullshit no please don't no, believe a word i say as far as I got it, as much as you told me, I think the I think the the way you what did you tell me? Like you, you said it was like uh, was like a parody of Red Riding Hood or something. Yeah, I think that's kind of clever though. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe like if you uh, would go to like 
liter literature classes or something, they could analyze it properly. <laughs> 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 but I have also like um, I mean I, I have thought about it like yeah um, the, 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 the basic uh, structure of the story is kind of like similar um, from like Riding Hood going to collect herbs and meeting the wolf beforehand like there's this is that stuff that's referenced but other than that I like never really considered it to be like a really thoughtful story and I, I also never advertise it as such and it's kind of weird then when i like sometimes people do reviews and i've read like some on instagram and they were like a bit uh complaining that it's more heavier on the show part not the tell part <laughs> um so so basically they they bought porn and then they complained that it's too much porn the, the, there is not much of a story of it yeah there, there was the complaint and i thought like okay but that's what 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 i i said it would be <laughs> i mean it's I mean, like more than anything i complain that if it's if, if you, it's... You're, you you can't complain that it's too much story of porn <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think probably most people know what they are getting. It was like one time when I uh, did the Not Safe for Work art book. I, I'm, I'm talking a lot about Not Safe for Work now, <laughs> um, but like I uh, got uh, someone that uh, wanted uh, that that sent it back to me with uh, like um, yeah, it's uh, I, I thought they were also normal artworks, but this is too much Not Safe for Work, and I thought. Uh, I, I said it's only not safe. <laughs> didn't my didn't you send like my brother a copy? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 your brother. I don't know if he if he shared it with you because I instructed him in the <laughs> in the uh, letter. I, I, actually, I did. I didn't have a look at it. No, I, the only <laughs> thing he showed me is like the custom artwork he made for him. <laughs> No, there is like I, I sent the uh, manga, like the Big Bad Wolf and the art book. Um, so he got that as well. He got both, yeah. And, and okay, he di he didn't mention it with like a single word that he had that as well. <laughs> you haven't looked at his shrine yet. <laughs> uh, I I kind of avoid looking at it. It's kind of disturbing. <laughs> to be honest. Well. Now, now you know. Now you have to uh, flip through it together. Question, question <laughs> to the chat: Where do you stash your um, materials? Be it on my heart, be, be it, be it the stuff that you might have gotten from Laovan or someone else. Where, where you, where you put it? I, I, I would assume that it's really just digital. I, oh well, I mean sometimes. Well, yeah, if it's just JPEGs, it's easy. I store all of my stuff on the blockchain. Ah, that was the joke. All right. <laughs> no, that wasn't the joke. That just came to me just now, but it wasn't actually a good joke to begin with. So let's back off from that topic. <laughs> we've realized uh, since we've revived the, uh, the gaming channel that shall not be named, that it's very easy to keep making the same joke about NFTs. And so I kind of want to stop doing that one joke about <laughs> NFTs. And that's what I've kind of noticed just now that I was moving in that direction again. <laughs> oh, somebody's saying, nice try, mom. I ain't telling you shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, just uh, what watercolors am I using? I'm using um, these um, Schminke Horadam watercolors. Um, it's the same one in the pants, so... So there's no real difference between tubes and pans. There is not. Practically, I, I, I often wonder. Like I, I don't know what you think about that, Marcel. But I, um, when I watch like content about watercolors and and it's like a review or something, and and the, the, they review the colors and and talk about the pigments, then I often think like, okay, with pigments, you can argue that there is like maybe a lot of binder in them, and so it's less pigmented, like. That's okay, but as far as I know, that the, the pigments that is used in those colors is always the same because there is not much you can like substitute it with. So when I, I it was once in the um, what is it like factory where where these colors get made, and um, 
they had like huge barrels full with pigments and they said like okay we had to exchange the color xyz uh, last year because like the um, resources run out and we had to like figure out another way to make this one but they also have the labels of what is inside the colors and for example if you have titanium white then there is like the color inside and that's with every color and that's called like that so i was often like okay with pigments i'm not sure like i think or i i could recommend at least like um also cheaper colors just that these ones are the ones that are in my local store <laughs> I, um, to be honest, I, I think it kind of depends on, uh, kind of depends on first of all what language you speak in because in in English all of it is called watercolor like all of it has the same name right yeah um, I I think like the what was it called like deck farm like the very cheap watercolors uh, they they have like the worst pigments you could have right. Yeah, I also think that they have like a different binder or something because that one isn't really, um, you can't really activate it again when it's uh, dried. So I, I think, so I, I'm not sure because I mean, I would have to look into it again because I've um, seen the same stuff with like uh, char uh, pastel charcoals, like the dry ones that are like just chalk. And some of them like are just. Um, stretched with like actual chalk or something like that then it's lower quality but as far as I've mm. seen like the, the basic pigments are like always the same whether they are like naturally uh, like earthy tones they are usually like terracotta or stuff like that like burnt umber <laughs> I am, uh, when it comes to that I like you know, when I found something that works for me, I stick with that. Like, I, I keep sticking with that because I'm so scared with just that, you know, buying something that on paper is quite good with its quality, but then you try it and you're like, man, that works like completely different than I thought it would. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I just stick to my watercolors, don't even know how to pronounce them because they're Russian, but I stick with them. So, so you're not uh, the, a huge fan of, of trying the new, newest stuff? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm like, I'm like a Gewohnheitstier. <laughs> ah, yeah. A creature of habit. And for me, yes. it was like, I think, I mean, I have some of them here. The, uh, when, when I had like these um, colors, have you ever tried like the yes. dye base? Yes, I did. And it's not, not your thing. <laughs> Uh, I think it was more my in inability because I never worked with uh, watercolors or something uh, up to this point. That's why it didn't work for me at all. I, sh I should give them another try because I have them all here, but I I'm kind of <laughs> too scared to waste my time on this. I mean, for, for me, it was also like quite the learning process where I thought, okay, um, it kind of looks hideous if you only use these ones. like. For one painting but combined i still think like it's it has its charm like then stuff if gets more vibrant them, exactly do you combine like do you use them as a groundation or um i use them i mean let's let's give it a try um I use them mainly for like uh, enhancing the saturation of tones so oh, so if you want to make a color pop then you additionally use those yeah yeah so for example if i want to the sky to be a bit brighter bit more vibrant then I can just use a single bit a little bit to um, achieve that but that's like the tricky part <laughs> to yeah. kind of like estimate how much you need uh, okay so now I'm um, so so this is like these color uh, color X colors right yeah, yeah, it's uh, same with like PH Martin's ones or like just mm -hmm. uh, the difference is that they are dye based. So there's not really like you couldn't really call it pigment. It's mm -hmm. more like, um, yeah, what your printer has. <laughs> so it's like just so maybe it's maybe it's because of like the cam or something. But I think that's that, that's also an effect you could uh, that's also a, a vibrant color you could also get by, you know, using watercolor. I can wait. <laughs> I think the, the best uh, way to show it is usually using purple. 
Cause purple, okay. um, has like a different, just, which one should I use? I think this one. There is also some purple uh, by watercolor uh, in regular pens that has, um, oh wait, I, I think I have the tube. <laughs> so like a bit nicer for viewing. Um, now some watercolors also have dyes. That's why they are like not really light fast. So if that's mm. um thing, then but yeah, I, I'll just put a spot there. Just now, ex oh damn, oh. that microphone. Don't hit the microphone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, this is uh, the watercolor one. Put that one next to it. Mm -hmm. I have the feeling that no, I'm excited if I actually see like the difference. Oh, I love that ASMR. Yes, the <laughs> mic. <laughs> yeah, right. It's kind of like. Uh... By the way, for those of you who just joined, no, you haven't missed much yet. Uh, as you can see, the progress on the on the painting itself I is. I think you can tell by minimal. the camera. It's kind I, of like. Oh, neon. I, can, I can tell. I can tell. Like the, the second one is a lot more vibrant. Yeah. I can tell. Yeah. Like neon almost. Yeah. yeah. And that's for for the blue ones also <laughs> kind of the case. It's just you don't always want to have it like that full amount. And, yeah, um, yeah, I get it because because having the sky like like that with the bright blue, that would be a bit too much. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've noticed that when I did like um, a video on um, there were like liquid watercolors also by by the same brand that these are made from, um, and they came also in like little flasks, and um, yeah. they were promising <laughs> because I thought well okay they they say like they are made with pigments and they are light fast so let's give it a try but mm, yeah it look, looked like just the watercolors <laughs> it was just like in liquid uh, form um just just as a little uh, as a little tip for you guys um in case I just read it in chat in case something happens um you said that the stream won't be safe um meanwhile youtube has uh, has a function where you can cut out uh, yep. things off that's the... that's what i mean so usually so usually we keep it online like right away uh so oh, okay. yeah i should have i should have said it will be unlisted for a brief moment until we have cut out the thing and its process so yes i mean the the, the stream itself will definitely be archived just maybe okay, not 100% yeah. of it, depending on whether this pillow flips around <laughs> accidentally, like that kind of stuff. Hey, we, we once did like a flip through, through um, the uh, ACEO cards, like the Kakao Karten, um, and there were like some... Some naughty bits oh, in there. Some bannable uh, things, and then yeah. we had to edit that out. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that's I, been I, only the, the only occasion so far. Yeah, it's just happened once. Yeah, I, I've had like I had like a couple of occasions. Uh, I don't know when they implemented these uh, these functions, but they are super helpful. Yeah, definitely. Also, this this new um, they've added this uh, live poll thing now, so we can start a poll at any point in time. So if you want to, if you want to engage and have a question for the chat rather than the other way around, so I'm gonna start a poll, which is who would win in a fight, Lauvan? <laughs> It's like, uh, oh, what was it? I, I watched the stream where this one was also always my question, like how many people can do it? <laughs> uh, what paper do I use? I, uh, oh, that that's also um, a sad story. <laughs> oh, the shame. Yeah, the th shame. Th that one was like kind of bad, really, really like, I could have used really nice paper for this one. Um, just like the hot press that that you know uh, marcel but um, as i'm like at echo's place i don't have all my watercolor paper here and i only had like the options um between this one and like the smaller size of this one so i i was 
was thinking like, okay, I could go for this one. This is the expensive one, right? The second one. Both eyes. <laughs> okay, both of them are expensive. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but this one is, uh, I had like, I don't know, bad batch of paper. I, I, I hate it. And, and then I thought, okay, let's try it. Let's try it. Maybe it's not as bad as you remember. Um, and then I, I had like a loose paper here and then I uh, painted on it and I thought, oh, that's, that looks all right. What, why, why did I hate this paper? And then I saw the edges of the paper and noticed like there's like a reddish glue and this paper has no red here. So this paper was from another block of paper <laughs> and I could have used it for the stream. It would have been perfect. Like the size would, be, would have been great. And the backside is not an option. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, I mean, I don't know if you can tell it comparatively, but if I paint on this one, this uh, gets like this when paper is like um, rubbed off texture. Uh, so yeah. So I ended up with using like Luma paper. So the one that I got from Dokumi. <laughs> it's not hot pressed but it's still like sturdy enough. Shame. Now back to the, uh, <laughs> like, like just quick, uh, quickly going back to the, um, to the watercolor thing. I, s since I just, you, you know, you never, you never post your art unfiltered, I guess. So when, th when there's things like lacking vibrancy or lacking contrast or something, it, it always feels so feels so empty because you can just you know when, when you print your artwork in, in like an art book or something you, you edit it beforehand because yeah. it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be lacking contrast anyway when you when you scan it so it also feels so it's, it's lacking consequence like even if you're uh, even if you're using cheaper colors um, you can, you can just pump up the vibrancy you know in post yeah so so I kind of I kind of missed the point of buying more and more. Um, uh, expensive colors because because you you're gonna edit them later on anyway right yeah i mean sure it's like i mean probably a way um I, i'm not i'm not sure if you if you have the same uh what is it like feeling when you enter like uh, an art shop <laughs> <laughs> i i do have it that's why i avoid art shops <laughs> <laughs> because for me it's like okay Last year I've bought these colors, okay, but this year they have these ones and I don't know what they do, so I'll, I'll try, I give them a try and then they just maybe buy like two tones or something and then later, I mean, with like the uh, recent uh, pandemic stuff, um, it's online shopping, obviously, <laughs> so online it's even worse because, yeah, you just see this things on your screen and think okay i have all the colors right in front of me i could <laughs> just uh, pick and choose um but no i i totally agree like uh, sometimes it's not really like i mean i i've also had enough instances where i've like bought colors and then thought okay uh, i i don't i won't use them again <laughs> But I, I still love to, um, yeah, play around with stuff. So that's why sometimes I get like the um, urge to to get out the oil, oil paints and, mm -hmm. and try something with that. Uh, it's often very short, but when it hits, like I, I think, okay, I I want to do something massive on a big uh, <laughs> canvas. And also, I think uh, when you said like the um, you can adjust these colors afterwards. I mean, sometimes when you want to uh, sell like the original, then it's often a good thing that they are like how they look online or something. And for that occasion, I mean, I still I still tweak a bit. So. <laughs> yeah, everyone does, but, uh, but that's kind of the point. You, you don't need uh, the the brightest colors or the, the most vibrant colors because. <laughs> <laughs> when when you filter it later on, it's gonna be vibrant anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but still, you have control with the original artwork when <laughs> when when you pick and choose like the um, the saturated tones over the. But but still, I think after all, I mean, I, I only had have had like a few problems with certain colors, 
like reds for example um the darker ones like a really dark vibrant red it's kind of rare to achieve that with the palette uh, or torquoise for example there, there is like a, a really good torquoise inside the pan but that one has like this granulating uh, properties so you always have to kind of get a balance between okay i want it to be vibrant but if you use too much color then it gets like this sandy effect mm, got a granulation so much <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's sometimes like instances where i think oh that would be so cool if it looks like a rock or like really like the surface like it's great for these textures um yeah i i, I get what you mean but i i'm more of a fan of adding that in post or adding it after the fact than uh, than having it on your base on your base color <laughs> i mean it's, it's it's a dangerous game kind of uh i often screwed that up i remember like there's one video i did like years ago with katniss everdeen and um that one i screwed up so bad like looking back at, uh, at it you can see like the violet that I use for shading, like it really makes the skin look almost like crumbly. <laughs> and I was just swiping the pigments around to prevent that. Mm. By the way, and I, just... I should, uh, you, uh, looking, looking at your stuff or uh, looking at the stuff you already did, kind of makes you want to make um, make watercolor portraits as well because it just kind of looks a certain way. It's so cool. I mean, the, the realistic ones. I, I I I remember the one was a was it the Life is Strange one where you used watercolors as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. There were a yeah, few that ones. one. I I think I think that one is like. The, in, in my eyes, the best ones you did so far because no. they they just look like they're not traditionally made. They look so good. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I had like this kind of series where I tried to recreate digital artworks with watercolors, and I kind of learned a lot of from that. I also, where like to. Um, skip watercolors and use pencils like drawing every single line for example uh, as yeah as you figured yourself like better when you have like pencils there um, um but yeah that that was kind of like a good way to learn things <laughs> it's especially about like controlling the wetness of the paper which is like uh at the moment, kind of, uh, I, I don't want to use like a hairdryer or something, but <laughs> it's like I'm just pushing around colors. I don't know if you like like your Dokumi booth was right uh, right besides mine. I don't know if you if I told you or if you noticed, but someone uh, someone gave me a hairdryer actually, like as a present. <laughs> just a hairdryer. In, in, yeah, in... just. Uh, but but it was. <laughs> It was a new one. It was in, it was neat packaged and everything. Uh, it, it was it was a brand new one. And have you have you used it in stream? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did just because of that. I because sometimes I um, sometimes I cursed because I I had to wait for that long for my for my artwork to to dry, and that's why why they uh, gifted me a hairdryer. That's uh, a really thoughtful person you have had that <laughs> <laughs> really considerate of him <laughs> <laughs> by the way uh, are you looking forward to ne uh, next year for this year uh, of conventions yeah i am um, like dokumi is the one that is planned as always i'm not sure if there's going to be like the icon again or if it's going to be cancelled again i'm not sure but that was like one convention that's really a smaller one in the early stages and we have been there like when i was still working on that comic book and i, I would have laughed after the fact that i released that book that uh, the convention would have been like happening but it didn't and got postponed and stuff like that so that's also something i look forward to even though i'm not sure if it's going to happen this year um mm. but dokumi dokumi is always 
<laughs> always on my uh, yeah top event list um, for for every year, I guess. Yeah, because because uh, I my my New Year's resolution, one of my New Year's resolutions was to um was to attend more conventions. So I finally. What, what would you? Is there a figure of speech in English as well? Über den Schatten springen? Um, there probably is. I can't. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't so know. I, I, I um, get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Something like that. I got out of my comfort zone. I got myself together, and I, um, I got into LBM, Leipziger Buchmesse. Hmm. Oh yeah, that 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 is pretty exciting. I, I assume. Yeah, I've I've never been there, and it's to be honest, it's so hard getting there. It's yeah. because I'm not like uh, like uh, one of the regular artists because they always get uh, it's always a raffle who gets in and who doesn't get a booth. Yeah. So I uh, like like Chen and Rehan, I <laughs> I signed up for like a commercial a commercial booth, and it's so. <laughs> Weird. If you if you if you're used to something like Dokumi where it's all so simple, um, signing up for LBM is is so weird, and you don't get anything like there. There's like creative booth number one, creative booth classic, and creative booth creative, and you you just you don't get <laughs> what they want from you. Just want an artist. <laughs> what do I need? <laughs> Somebody uh, in yeah, chat. By the way, some. Somebody in chat yeah. says, "Bite the bullet." That that might fit. Oh yeah, you bit the bullet. Yeah. Isn't that kind of like an insauren Apfel bite? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. It's closer closer to that actually. Yeah. Yeah. So so anyway, um, Chen convinced me to go there to LBM mm -hmm. because he helped me out a bit with that. So so if you want to go there, if you ever want to go there, just ask someone else what to take, <laughs> uh, what, what to book, because you yourself you just don't get it when you when you look at this mess. Yeah, I mean, we were like two times. We actually like forgot that we were. We've been already two times there, like as uh, just visitors, because um, like I mean, we, we remember one time and then thought, well, there was another photo on the phone, like from the year before. Um, right. But uh, as a visitor, um, I, I have to say, like I really enjoyed it, like a lot. It's really big um, with all the different artists there. And I mean, especially like after the last two years, I assume that when it happens and you are there, uh, that it will be kind of like a great experience. <laughs> At least like even as a visitor, it's kind. It was kind of really fun to go there. Yeah, I, uh, to be honest, I because I always attended like um, Frankfurt Book Fair. Mm -hmm. I never went to Leipzig Book Fair. That's why, you know, I, I, I've already been to a book fair in Frankfurt and it was so boring. I hated it. Like, I don't, I, I'm not going to attend it anymore because it was so boring. A book fair, it's an actual book fair. You know, people standing there, marketing their books, making maybe readings of their books. And there was nothing else but that. But since um, in the Leipzig book fair, there's also, um, there's also like this manga comic con within It's, Could you compare it to something else? Like, is it is it like a mini dokumi in there? It's kind yeah, of bit. like that. Yeah. But it's also so if you um, compare the scale of like the manga comic stuff yeah. there yeah. compared to the rest, then it's obviously still a book fair. So there's like a, a lot of different like halls uh, full of just the normal stuff, and then you the have like the normal stuff, the normal book stuff, <laughs> the and not the, weep stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then you have like the rest is um, uh, one one huge area full with uh, like exhibitors, like artists. Um, but I would assume, just judging by what you said about like Frankfurt uh, Book Fair, um, that maybe one different thing is, or at least that's something that made it really cool for me, is the special guests they had. So there was like once uh, Takeshi Obata. Uh, oh yeah, right, and there was also uh, Kubo, like the author of Bleach, there as well. Yeah, and uh, I, I happened to like get an, uh, um, what is it, like a shikishi from the artist of uh, Blue Exorcist. That oh, was... that's awesome. 
Yeah, this is, these are the experiences where you think like, oh, this makes it really special compared like to um, other conventions. Even though I still regret that I haven't been like uh, at um, any magic in 2006 or seven or eight. I don't know. Like there was like the artist of the Grey Man, uh, and it's the if you search for the Wikipedia article <laughs> on the uh, manga artist. Then the only image that shows up is one that was shot there because she otherwise is kind of like undercover. And I was like, ah. Oh. And it was still in Bonn, so it was like in reach for me. <laughs> but I you didn't go there. Yeah, I was a bit too young, kind of. Like I was still not, um, what is it? Like I, I was too scared, I guess. Like, um, uh so to anyone to anyone listening or watching, you're like a big fan of D. Grayman, so it was like a big deal for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Just like after, it means the same. Uh, there were, um, in, in the town that I live, uh, we have like a festival once a year in summer. And um, I mean, I was like kind of more on the uh, like, yeah, goth music side. And on, in, on that festival, there were, uh, I mean, I catched a few bands, like I catched Xandria and, and I think Reef's Eyes and, and other other symphonic metal bands and also there were industrial bands. But looking back then at the lineup that they had, <laughs> I was kind of sad. I thought, oh, well, if I would have only known earlier on that I liked this music, then I <laughs> would have been there. Yeah, it feels the same with like the animagic. That's uh, something like a bummer when you are not really uh, because I think it was in the year that the Greyman was published here, and that was a bit also too early for me to understand who that person was. Um, so yeah. Oh yeah, right. Because I think back in back in like 2010 or maybe 2005, like this year span, uh, this time span, I also didn't know about the artists behind. You know, the artists behind uh, all of the manga series and manga books that are out there. You only knew the name of the series, but you didn't know the names behind that. So that's why there wasn't like a big hype around the persons back then, right? Yeah, it's also, I think, I mean, the um, first time I thought about that there, the author is always, well, was always mentioned on the manga magazine Bansai. And it's like why I kind of um, I'm, like subconsciously knew that okay Naruto is Masashi Kishimoto like you, you could like learn the names with the uh, manga but you still didn't think like okay this one can't be drawn by just one person like no way so it's uh, just another name <laughs> and it's only yes also, yes uh, uh, also people people uh, someone in someone in the chat said uh, didn't they complain about manga and cosplay taking over book fairs yeah, uh, the thing is with with uh, Leipzig, uh, the book fair. Um, as I said, like there's a huge place for the manga stuff, but obviously the cosplayers they run around everywhere uh, to make photo oh, shootings. So they they have like uh, nice photo setups, like not really intentionally, but like the fair, like the building or like the the halls that's uh, in. Like they they have cool glass and metal architecture things going on and they're like really favorite uh, place for cosplayers to do photo shoots and um, i guess that's what like kind of a few people were pulled off by that i guess because i mean they're literally like scattered all over the fair not just only in the area for mangas <laughs> But I think uh, I think those people are better off visiting like the Frankfurt Buchmesse or Book Fair because there it's like the manga and anime part at Frankfurt Book Fair is so small. Like, have you have you seen it? How how it goes there? I think I've seen like one video once. <laughs> Yeah, because I it wasn't even worth you know mentioning because it's like not even not even half of of an regular of your of a regular hall of dokumi or something it was oh man it's it's so t it, it, it's so tight it's incredible <laughs> i i even went there i i regret going there even. <laughs> barely anyone showed up because 
because it's always uh, it's always been about the book fair itself but you you make you're giving me high hopes for leipzig yeah i mean i, I hope i really hope that they have like cool guests that that would be like the one thing <laughs> and the others is they oft, also often had like these panels where like artists would talk uh, about stuff that i think also gives like a bit of atmosphere like that they are like these panels that you would see like on american comic con and other conventions like that not really here or at least i don't know if dokumi has like these kind of panels uh with uh, creators and stuff like that but um yeah it felt like that at least uh, with the book fair in leipzig that they kind of try to get this appeal there like um, just having short panels with artists talking about their work yeah i mean i, mean, I, I won't be able to attempt that in any way <laughs> everything, then maybe, everything maybe it's in the in the uh in close range of your booth then you can listen to it i'd appreciate that but <laughs> i i won't get my hopes up for that so so how are the chances of you being there privately uh rather slim <laughs> uh, okay i mean it's, it's uh, kind of like really far away and then we would have to look early on for is it in march yeah it's it's uh, like 17th of march we might be busy there <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh i mean also let's hope that it happens <laughs> There was, yeah right it takes place in the first place yeah. uh, there was something when when you said you were going there i thought like okay um i mean i know that they raffle the the spots so no, that's not really an option there so i would also have to go for like the uh what is it like business commercial one yeah. commercial ones and then i thought okay you know the risk is too high <laughs> it's uh at least like because you have to plan everything beforehand with the hotels and stuff like that. And I was like, oh. But yeah, I, I would love to go there again as a visitor someday. Yeah, I, I mean, I get that, but this year I'm kind of optimistic on it uh, with all the vaccinations and stuff. I think, I think it's, uh, I think it could happen right? more than more than the previous two years because the previous two years, uh, yeah, they had bad luck there. Yeah, yeah. Also, I think, I mean. At one point, you would say, I mean, it's like the same with fireworks or something. Like, okay, I don't know how they will be able to sustain themselves. And I, I'm not sure, like, who would want to put pull the trick at some point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's like a thing with conventions not happening. It's uh, also, I mean, there is like a business behind it. And if it's not happening every year, like one year after the other, I think one year they can... Two years, maybe, but I'm not sure. By the way, there's this poll that's been sitting there for a few minutes. We now got 330 votes in. I was asking, <laughs> would you rather sit next to Darius on that bench or be the burp sitting on his shoulder? And I was surprised to see how sort of even the result is, actually. People... It, it was a draw almost for like the first few minutes. <laughs> but people seem to prefer being the burp oh zoomy is in chat hello zoomy also <laughs> earlier sunny explosion is also here which i have to shout out every single time because without sunny explosion uh we wouldn't currently have that capture card that is capturing the main camera yeah so once again thank you for that thank you very much uh, watercolor is kind of like the, the most difficult thing to think like okay the background is lighter, the, per the, the person has to be darker, and then you have to shade, 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 and think like, okay, another tone darker. I think you can salvage a lot of stuff with, uh, with colored pencils afterwards, right? Yeah, yeah. It's often a thing of uh, laziness. <laughs> <When I think laughs> a matter like, of laziness. Okay. Yeah, because... I'm not sure like uh, how, how you do it, but for me, it's when I use colored pencils, I like to use them really like subtly, like very um, that I that I don't have to shade as much because otherwise you see the structure of like the the pencils. And at certain points, I think, oh, 
should have done that with just another coat of uh, or just another wash of watercolor. It would have mm -hmm. sold the the um, texture better, but um, yeah, no, sure. So yeah. I mean, you've you've learned quite a lot with watercolors the, the recent years. Yeah, thanks, Mark. <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, I, I think it, it's just a matter of, of you know practicing because I I used watercolor pretty much every day for for one year straight. So there's a lot of things you can learn in that <laughs> time frame. I, I think it's still uh, strange that while you were uh, focusing on watercolors, that I kind of shift more to digital art. <laughs> This is something where I thought, oh, uh, when I uh, wanted to do like uh, a, strict, a Twitch stream again, I thought, I kind of like digital is easier now. I'm I'm more used to that. And then it's like, ah, uh, but watercolors have been like the main thing I did so far. <laughs> so so do you? I think I think if, uh, if people were to ask, then watercolors, uh, uh, then uh, digital art is more you your main medium right now huh? yeah I, I would think so too just because like the the last videos have all been digital related tutorials but i mean it's kind of i'm i'm not sure like how do you find the ideas for your videos because for me it's often a thing where i think okay i've explained that one in this video and this step in this video so yeah that's basically it what should i talk about next <laughs> and um, I mean, obviously, you could do like a video on clothes. You could do a video on whatever. Um, but often, my head, it's like, okay, like the basic concept is the same. Like, if I do a video on clothes, I would. It would be very similar to how I do hair, for example. And um, yeah, at a, certain points, then these shifts of media make it a bit easier for me <laughs> to cover like different topics because then I think like okay it has a different look a different style basically and um, yeah, that that was kind of yeah the, the main main thing to to do like more digital videos at the moment because I thought with watercolor I had like a lot already explained <laughs> I guess I guess it's that, that's the that's the advantage of you know still working a nine to five job because you're, you're constantly thinking and you're excited about making videos so that's why I, I think about this more or less all day <laughs> and that's why uh, and that's how I, these ideas pop in my head because I think about them all day. I mean that's that's admirable. <laughs> 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 I, I would love to to just. Uh... Yeah, have have everything structured. I mean, the um, video about drawing hair was something that took like two weeks just writing. <laughs> so <laughs> just writing, okay? Yeah, because I I, I thought about like okay, um, we have the basic stuff that one I think everyone gets at a certain point. Like okay, you have like a growing point and you have like. I have a like, consistent flow out of it, so that it doesn't look like uh, shards of glass or something. But then I thought about shading, and I had no idea how to explain it, because I have no method that I could explain there. That's like mm. just random, just... I mean, with digital art even more, because you can just redo any, any brush stroke. And so, um, yeah, I, I try to, to think about how to explain that stuff and then that one took a while and then I thought about the, the letters thing like okay um, what's random enough <laughs> but you can still like everyone can do that everyone can write or uh, like majority and then it was like okay uh, hello today I want to talk still I have this kind of feeling when I uh, notice like the uh, mistakes that I do or like inconsistencies so it's like when you for example do a video on drawing hands and um, then you think about well okay I've explained how I do the hand in this angle but how do I would explain it for another one then kind of like okay can I call this video now how to draw hands when I can only draw one hand after watching it it's like this kind of stuff bugs me so much <laughs> Yeah, that's why I always. That's why I think it's always important to don't teach people how to copy something, but rather 
um, but, but rather the basics of it, and you'll get backlash for that because I do get it a lot where people see see like a tutorial and there's there's two kinds of people. Um, the one the one kind of person you know looks at a tutorial and just wants to copy something one by one. And that's what they understand as a tutorial. And then there's the second kind of people that um, that. You know, they, they want to learn the actual basics and want to learn how it actually works, which I think is the way better way of approaching a tutorial. So, um, it's, it's, I think it kind of depends on the, uh, on the way you want to structure a tutorial. Yeah, I mean, um, for, but, but that's like also kind of the problem because with hands, you can talk about like, yeah, dividing it into basic shapes. Um, But just from my experience, when I uh, read these uh, how to draw manga books, where, where that was often like a thing, I never really knew how I could use that for, for myself. And so nowadays mm. I am just like, okay, uh, I don't even bother with that topic. <laughs> Because yeah. it's like, uh, I mean, from the um, practical view, like the quickest way to, to draw a hand is just take a picture of your own hand like that's kind of Using references, yeah. yeah and that's that would my head be like okay if i would do a video about hands it would be just with this one sentence <laughs> 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 like use your your hands as reference or something and i say oh, damn but yeah i mean i that's something for for the new year i hope that uh i i'll, I'll have more creative power with videos <laughs> because uh It's still more than when I did the the comic book. That's what I think is, is like kind of amazing about your output because you uh, had like a full comic book series finished, um, <laughs> which I, I couldn't imagine how how uh, time consuming that must have been to work on videos and a comic book. But uh, yeah, my my output last year was better than when I worked on a comic book. So this year, hopefully, I'm back into it. Not sure, but though. <laughs> <sighs> so that's that's kind of your new year's resolution then in a way in a way i think um and i would also do um want to try to work on like the story that i have thought for the characters um but i i know that this would really just kill everything else so i don't know how how wishful thinking That would be to really uh, get my ass on that, sitting on that, working on that, rather than doing everything else. Because I also yeah, wanted to do more with the, um, not say for work stuff. So. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the plate is full. <laughs> yeah, that's. I I think that that's such a shame because um, because rather than asking yourself. Uh, what do I want to work on is it's more of the question of what is it worth to work on, right? Yeah, it's uh, the thing is that with everything I, I get some joy out of it So it's not like that. I could pick one over the other It's more like I know that some things are more work than others and then it's like yeah I'd rather do more different kind of things than just spent my year as I did with the comic book like that was just full a full year working on that <laughs> yeah but I think you you're kind of you're kind of a perfectionist like that because I, I think without even having to read it I know you paid attention to things that no one nobody would, yeah. even noticed right? yeah yeah it's just, it's something also that I had to learn like the the one one problem is that I, I uh, did it digitally um, but the first page was kind of drawn traditionally um, and I noticed that after drawing like a whole full classroom uh, traditionally I thought no um, I'll just do it digitally and um, but I never really thought about like the size of the book like the the final resolution that I will need for the book so I just painted everything on like uh, Dina 3 Dina 3 um, which killed like the computer, <laughs> just like the, the panels being that uh, giant scales. Um, and then you need, of course, a lot of layers and stuff like that. And I also mm -hmm. painted everything without the um, text bubbles. So 
it was another thing where like I, I lost kind of like the work because it got covered with those bubbles and that would be something that I would pay attention to when I would do another project but also I would like the project to be in color <laughs> because like oh man when I did the the, the uh, manga the process of selecting the areas that you want to um, shade or that you need to shade uh, because like the character has a bit darker skin so every time that character shows up you have to select it i often thought like i, I could do it in color but i now plan it to be like black and white that's why some cross hatching and stuff is going on i can't color that stuff so i have to stay black and white but it could have been done in color because that would be the same work at least cell shading style that Yeah. yeah, I get what you mean. There's so <laughs> many different styles. It's also kind of limiting, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, overall, I think when I would do it in color, I, I probably I would shift around. The, the only thing where I often struggle a bit with is like, uh, I'm so used to drawing everyone and everything naked. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah, that, that's a big problem, I guess. It's like with, with uh, giving him the clothes, clothes here. It's like I, I mean, I, just ha habit-wise, I would put in like folds and creases in the in the. But I don't know if it makes sense. I don't know. So it's, and that I, I would know that would bug me when I would uh, do that for uh, for comic book at certain points because I just see like ah okay that's something I really haven't put everything of my brain into just yeah painting a few creases with uh, some strokes um, but on the other hand and that's something where I kind of like admire as my brother works because he <laughs> he just says like oh damn well don't don't need to pay so much focus on it but I don't know I'm more on the illustration side so I guess that comes with it yeah that's just I, I think I think all of these problems uh, it's I, I I I missed the time where I didn't have to you know think about that yeah <laughs> I mean as a kid I kind of felt always bad that it doesn't look... So I, I'm not even sure whether I really ever had like my head free of um, that standard that I want to achieve in a way, um, if, if you understand that. But uh, yeah, I, I would like to be just able to just say, okay, the expression looks about right, so it's readable and then go on. But um, yeah, maybe maybe that will be a resolution for, for this year. Just thinking oh well doesn't look good but what do i care <laughs> <laughs> i'm not caring with this yeah. <laughs> that kind of was my new resolution for uh for past year ah did, did, did you achieve achieve that with the art <laughs> uh i kind of did uh, for the first yeah. time because i knew i wanted to make an art book which is now out since uh, yeah. since a month it's it's available so i actually pulled through and my um so in order to make an art book, I need to make art that I actually like, yeah. which wasn't much of the case uh, beforehand. So my US, New Year's resolution for 2021 was to, you know, make art that I actually like. And watercolor helped a huge bit uh, with that because I don't know if you, if you feel me on that because you're working a lot uh, on a tablet, but um, I don't, I, I, I just don't like the, uh, the the cell shaded anime type of look it, it's okay it's, it's serviceable but i think having um having like something that rehan for example does something incredibly rendered uh traditionally then i think it, it's a lot more appealing to me than having having a 2d cell shaded uh artwork and but but the thing is um because i i only used copics before i my, my artworks just look so stiff with that so I needed like um, I needed something else I needed something else to to make my artwork <laughs> look good and I like and I like the the watercolor style so I just went with that and luckily it uh, worked out fine and that's why I could complete my artwork I mean that that's that's great so so for me it's I'm not sure like I when when I started I thought like copy was the ultimate 
experience to color the picture. <laughs> I thought so too at the beginning, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, obviously, like, I think in, in 2007 or something like that, I switched to watercolors because it was just more affordable. Um, and then... Oh, it, that was the reason. Yeah, yeah. The, the, what, we were at, like, the... Um, at an art shop that was far more, more far away than the one that I'm usually going to because the first watercolors I had was like a Van Gogh set and it was really, really cheap. So it cost like there were 12 colors and I think it was about 10 euros. And it has like the palette, it has a brush and stuff like that. It was only, I noticed that the paper is going to be more expensive because um, yeah, I yeah. Al always use ordinary printer paper for copics. It's the cheapest option. <laughs> But with watercolors, you can't do that. Um, so, yeah, that that was like the the, the um, appeal. Then later on, that I figured out that Copics are trying to emulate watercolor look in a way. So that this kind of like flowish nature that it has, that also the advertisements had at the time, um, is far easier achieved with watercolors than with Copics because you need a lot of control, a lot of like timing and correct uh, colors as well with, with working with markers um, but over the years I also really appreciated digital art because that was something when I got my first tablet also I think 2007 um, that I uh, often just wondered how how do people do this <laughs> yeah. like, how do you get there because obviously at some point you'd think oh they just photo bashed something like they used a picture and then they they uh, painted over it or something like that and even mm -hmm. if i thought that i didn't know how to do that <laughs> even if i if i excuse myself like okay there's probably something going on that i don't figure out but i couldn't replicate it even though yeah and um it's often by i always uh, uh, i said when people ask me what i think it's it's more um difficult I, I would say digital art is kind of more difficult because with traditional art you have kind of like at a certain point understood it <laughs> if you know what i mean like watercolors they have like a certain uh, way they behave and you can at some point understand how you can control them and with digital art it's often i just wondered and i can totally understand like when you say it's uh, it, I mean, it has a different appeal if you do cell shading yep. or if you do like the Zakimi Chan style rendering. Like, it's it speaks to different people. Um, and for me, I, I'm not sure like whether it's maybe it's just the the challenging part that drove me kind of also to to also work on my digital art because it's something that I often just do parallel. <laughs> <laughs> just one day at this next day at that and yeah yeah i think I, I think it's more of the maybe it's more of the satisfaction i get from it you know like having having a traditional art piece like there right in front of you and and working on it rendering on it feel, kind of feels like carving something into marble maybe that's <laughs> that's a nice comparison but instead of that, uh, working on something digitally, you can endlessly re rewind stuff. You can yeah. undo stuff. That's I, I think that kind of takes the fun out of it. Like playing a video game on easy mode. It, it sounds I incredibly privileged and incredibly <laughs> um, uh, like a. It, it, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like pro or something at this. It's not mm. like it's not like it's too easy for me. But. <laughs> um, it feels a bit a, a bit more easy when you can rewind stuff or can uh, control Z stuff um, compared to you know making actual art on on an, on paper. You know, rendering something like this it, it gets you a different kind of satisfaction to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I see where uh, that that for for me it's also like totally different. Also, this kind of streaming setup. No, for uh, obvious reasons like okay i have to uh yeah set things up have my water there and in the end there is like the original work that you can later look back on and think like yeah that was my hand that, that made it which i think <laughs> is with with the digital art it, it uh, is a bit trickier but i also think that 
I'm not sure, like, my, my perspective on it shifted a bit with the last years or even before that, because I noticed that when I, I was once um, at Gamescom, like, uh, as, as an exhibitor, and I, I'm not sure if we talked about it last year, <laughs> I just um, I went to my... But um, there I was um, exhibiting some, like, traditional artworks, and only a few d digital ones that I did at that point. Um, and I really noticed that a lot of people uh, had, I don't know, like wrong, a wrong perception of digital art because they thought it was kind of like that, that photograph. Like uh, there was another artist that had her art printed on like high gloss paper and, and people were like giving that judging views like, uh, okay, she just printed out any, a few photos she found on the internet or something like that. And at that point I thought, well, I, I couldn't do that, but I also have a hard time communicating to, to these people that uh, um, are there just think because they had my traditional work basically next to that. So I think that's where the judgment came from. And it was when I thought like, okay, um, I'm not sure. Like, I like both. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I mean, I like both <laughs> as well. I just <laughs> think with, um, I mean, I, I, in a weird way, I, I mean, I, I appreciate digital art and traditional art as well. I also practice both of it. So it's not like I'm, I'm just in one camp and don't get in the other. Mm. Um, I think with that, in a weird way, I think because um, it's uh, may, uh, maybe I'm thinking thinking of a wrong comparison, but with making like a big landscape, uh, of course, it's a lot of work with both mediums. But on the traditional side, you can always there's always this aspect that you could ruin it in any you know you could ruin it any time. It's it's more of a it's more of a challenge, I think. And of, of course, the dig digital one has has a different kind of challenge. Of course, making it look natural and making it look authentic is, is a whole different topic. Um, but I think that's kind of what draws people to it, that there's only this one original, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. I also think like, it's uh, definitely also uh, something else when you are able to show people um, yeah, something that you can hold in your hands. That, that's, I think, where, where always the sentence came from uh, around the time, like, is it hand-drawn when it was referring to digital <laughs> artwork? Because, like, of course it is, but no, you can't have anything physical or, like, at least just a print or something. <sighs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a cool conversation about that. <laughs> <laughs> because I I often think like okay um, I'm I'm not even sure where where I would uh, what if I would pick a camp or something like that and it's kind of making my my uh, head clearer about that that mm. yeah oh look at that oh you got a, you got a super chat in oh yes thank you so much Kalpana for the super chat um, happy ha new year thank you for the live stream thank you for tuning in yeah <laughs> thank you. I often feel awkward because it's... <laughs> what do I say? Thank you. You've thank done you. Just thank that. you very much. Uh, yeah. I feel like lately everyone's trying to. That's that's also something. I think we've already talked about this, but uh, I think I I've I, I follow like a handful of uh, of artists that all look like they're drawing that, that like they're. Say, like they're the same person, you know, this this Sakemi style um, yeah, yeah, yeah. artworks. And I also have a hard time telling them apart, to be honest. I and and I wouldn't say like I'm a beginner, so that's why I mistake them easily. I think I, I have an eye for this, but they they are quite similar. So they it's it kind of the indi the individuality kind of goes lost there. I think that that's also something I, I've heard um, from from uh, more people that there's like a certain trend in in like the art community and like when when one style gets like uh, yeah it rises in popularity that that you have like 
an easier time replicating that with digital art, I guess. So that's like other people can pick up on that style and make it somewhat their own, somewhat stays of obviously the style. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I noticed that for uh, also like kind of the webtoon style, <laughs> if you can call it that. I know so. what I exactly know what you mean <laughs> with that. Because there's also, I mean, it makes sense that this thing becomes kind of like the own art style thing because you need to work quickly with colors and and, and has yeah, there are only certain certain things that make sense if you have like these tight schedules and and stuff like that. That of of course they they can't really um, do like popular. I mean, some do, but. Um, that, that that art style kind of has that aesthetic though i that's that's the thing like sometimes i just look at them and think like could i do that could i do that for my next project could i is it, is it uh, i i'm not sure <laughs> but yeah the, i think i think it's a lot more work than it looks like because it's it looks so easy and so simple but you have to take so many things in consideration like backgrounds shading uh maybe if there's you know a different atmosphere you have to go for a different color palette it's i think it, it's a lot harder than it looks yeah I, I also think like also the the amount of knowledge that you have to have with like the perspectives expressions that's something i often thought is really hard to to uh master especially when we had the gothic phone session <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. I, I thought, okay, well, I, I want to have like goofy expressions, and all that came out was like uh, basic. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, the, I, I I would also think that um, with digital art, it's probably easier to to uh, sh make shifts to your style than with, with traditional art. Even though I still uh, can at least attest for myself that. Um, when you've kind of like achieved um, the uh, watercolor style for your manga work, then you can try the realism work and it would be easier, I guess. Because when you, you achieve work, so. I, I, I would assume that, yeah. Because a lot has to do with knowing how wet your paper is and so on when it's dry. When you can create like um, certain, what is it, gradients and stuff like that. Mm. Oh, Echo has made like. Um, you, you, talk, you need to talk to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> your, mic your microphone is directional. <laughs> Echo made another survey. So what do you prefer? Digital, traditional art or both? But yeah, it seems pretty... Equal. Equal, <laughs> yeah. equal across the board. Other people like both equally or they, they just prefer one or the other, but it doesn't look... So because it, it, honestly, if you had asked me, I would have said that... Uh, digital art would win because i have a feeling most people nowadays are like oh yeah i want to get into this like tablet stuff and all that yeah, yeah. so it's interesting to see that traditional art is still i mean okay well traditional that also means just like working with just a pen right just doing line art for example so yeah. you don't have to involve yourself with watercolor or copics or oils or acrylics or like all that jazz so you, you can start simple yeah yeah but i think um I think it's just what you said, the the appeal of, you know, it being a gadget, I think that draws a lot more people in than one might expect at first. Yeah, also I noticed, I mean, maybe you have the same comments underneath your, your tutorials, uh, that um, I think the, the cost aspect of, of traditional art often, even like if it's not ad, like copics, obviously uh, is out of the question, but I think watercolor is kind of affordable. Uh, especially for how long you can work with like a single pen um, but the thought that you only have to buy a tablet once and then you can basically paint on it forever i think that also makes like the the digital medium more popular nowadays compared also to um, to earlier years i i don't think it's that i think it's more of what was it i think it's a streisand effect when one when uh, when when some when someone use it and then lots of more people use it i think because on tiktok and on youtube you see so many um so many videos and shortcuts about digital art you barely see anyone like that using traditional art i think that's why because so many people use it more people get exposed to it and more people use it and then more people get exposed to it and so on yeah 
Hey, that, that, that also makes sense. I mean, that was the thing that, that drew me to comic markets <laughs> because you just saw everyone using them and you thought, oh, yeah, uh, that's exactly it. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for how, how this, this will turn out in the future because I still think that uh, it, it, it has an appeal uh, for um, artists to also know like the traditional medium. Um, just because like when I had uh, a few friends back um, at like 2010 um, that were basically just digital artists, um, they often struggled with like the pencil. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, I heard that. I hear that a lot as well in my comment section. And I think that's kind of a problem, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I would assume because uh, I think it also kind of has you as an artist you kind of have a bit of pride and when you tell someone i'm an artist and they hand you a pencil and you can't do it then yeah, they think it's exactly it yeah i mean i mean making commissions in uh, on a you know uh, when you're when you're attending a convention that that's gonna be like super stressful right yeah yeah especially if, if that's really i mean that that's also an, uh, um i i don't really create the masterpieces at a convention but at least um <laughs> the pencil drawings look okay <laughs> i know I, I gotta say you're uh, at least the stuff you posted online i don't know what what kind of crimes you you're making when, <laughs> when no one's looking but the stuff you uh, published before i think look pretty good like for example the i think you did a watercolor one uh, two years ago and i think last year i've got i've got a um i've got a commission from you as well i th those looked all pretty good thank you <laughs> but also <laughs> no, I, no, the, the... I, I actually mean that i think the one the ones you're doing there are that they, they don't look much different from from the sketches you usually uh, publish yeah, 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 yeah. See, that's that's gonna help you with this like oh let's let's build up this fu like fuck it attitude and just like yeah, yeah, churn just, stuff just, out. Uh, they, they they look all right. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, I didn't say they look all right. I th I said they look pretty good. <laughs> no, you no, you it. said they look perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't okay, you remember? No, I, I didn't go that far. <laughs> you don't remember anymore. <laughs> <laughs> chat always remembers. Um, oh, we have another a super chat. Yeah, in this in this case, it's the, apparently the uh, the sticker that was sent, the unicorn, oh. the rainbow unicorn. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, no, but I, I think still like uh, on conventions, it's that that kind of stress level where I often just um, yeah. I mean, I only manage to accept like maybe four books or something per day. Because I had that experience too often, where I afterwards looked at the work and thought, "Damn, it doesn't look that good." <laughs> Not really That's something. That's my secret. I always think that. <laughs> <laughs> just ignoring it. <laughs> no, it's just because I th I think you gotta consider this from the opposite uh, perspective. That's I, I think that's super interesting actually because I the last uh, convention I attended was Comic Con in Stuttgart uh, like about a month ago one and a half maybe and um, I'm like this as well I'm always a perfectionist also that's why I always hate my stuff <laughs> <laughs> but um, there was um, there were people and and they of course they you know they wanted commissions and of course I accepted them but. Um, when it's getting late, I'm always saying something like, "I hey, don't expect, don't expect a masterpiece or something," because you know, convention's over in like two hours, so I, I gotta, you know, I gotta speed through this so it won't be looking perfect. And an answer I'm always, or at least I'm, I'm mostly getting is something like, "I don't care how it looks. I honestly don't care how it looks. <laughs> the main thing is that you draw it and you're signing it." I think. The same thing goes for you as well. I, I think even if you're if you're drawing something that's only acceptable, people would be happy because it's from you. Yeah, the the, the I, I'm kind of like in a tricky situation where I um I have to raise prices for not so many, so I don't have like twenty books there. 
that's like and I, supply and demand yeah and and then i have to Artif artificially uh, artificially <laughs> changing the supply and demand i see yeah t at least like uh, there's nothing artificial about it that's just how it works <laughs> yeah because yeah, I, 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 guess, I guess i guess that's right yeah so so you so you don't even want to at the in the first place uh, i i like to do some <laughs> <laughs> but often it's when when you're at the convention and and people I, I can totally understand that I mean I'm also like uh, when um, Rehan I think at a certain point just skipped that but I also were just running with like uh, the book and and uh, especially I was always lucky when the convention was kind of like empty just running there and handing the book over there um, but for me often the experience is then that I have to just like I've taken maybe four books and then I always have to say like oh I can't I can't do it I can't do it and I thought I could prevent that from happening if I raise the prices and I can only do that to the extent where I'm comfortable with doing the work so I don't want to oversell something you don't want to charge like a hundred bucks for, for something for, that, that you feel is not worth a hundred yeah. bucks and so every convention which which for those of you who have never been to his booth his prices are nowhere near 100 bucks no. like that was just a, yeah, a, yeah. a figure i just pulled out of I my think ass they're like 20 or, or 30 or something mm -hmm. um because it's a convention and you can't put the effort in that you would do for an ordinary commission but um yeah that, that that's kind of where where my um insecurity comes from when it's about like these uh yeah um, commissions at the convention because i think okay it's higher than I would do it normally because I know what I can deliver <laughs> at a convention. It's not as much. Um, but on the other hand, uh, the price is like, okay, I have to do something at least presentable. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's, it's like um, a downward spiral where you are just like figuring out, okay, uh, is this good enough for this price and stuff like that. and. I like how everyone, like in this equation, everyone on each side seems to be really nice about or trying to be really nice about it. So there's a there's a message in chat from someone who apparently has been at your booth at some point saying, I'm still scarred from not having enough time, no, from, from you not having enough time and then giving me a free little sketch with an autograph. And I was too shy and didn't tip you anything, no. though I really should have and wanted to, El Mao. No, no problem. No, th that's, I mean, that's something I, I really like doing. I think, uh, yeah, like doing just autographs and, and I mean, I have like this little signature shibi drawing that, that is like done in a few seconds. That's... Because you've done it a million times yeah. <laughs> for every single thing you ship. <laughs> how, how long did it take you, Marcel, to sign all your cards for, for the art books? <laughs> Exactly one live stream, so about oh, three or okay. four. Ah, okay. three to four. Okay, okay. Yeah, for me, it's often uh, just a whole morning when I uh, had the Etsy shop open, um, which currently is closed uh, because there's another project that I probably will have to spend more time on in the future. Um, but yeah, when when I signed like the books and the the cards. It's like, oh, okay, I have this bad badge and it's just the whole morning. <laughs> and always afraid that uh, the, the ink smudges when I put another card yeah. on top. I, I feel that because I always, I always, um, uh, I always, yeah, the, no, that's that's actually a lie. Yeah, I, I kind of stopped caring about that after a while. <laughs> I mean, at certain points, it's just like I, I imagine, like when you have uh, the at least your brother helps you with the um, shipping. Uh, yeah. But for me, it's at certain points you just can't go into everything. I mean, uh, you got a very nice boyfriend, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the stuff is stored at uh, my place with my brother, and he won't. He doesn't bother. He has his own. <laughs> <laughs> It's it, it was rough, like when uh, the last two times when the Etsy shop was open, it's uh, really a, a whole week went by just getting things ready to ship and... Uh. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I know what you mean about that. <laughs> it kind of, whole, uh, the whole November was like that for me. So, are you looking forward to your next project? <laughs> Uh, I am, in fact, because it kind of. That's that's just that's just what I said because 
Because when you're going to work 9 to 5, you're kind of looking forward to that stuff because you're stuck at work, which is like but the, it's, the worst. It's, it's, it's not your art, though. It's just like signing and packing things. That, that... Yeah, but it's like, it's, it's, if you would have told yourself that, let's just say 15 years ago, that you, you're, stuck in, you're stuck with doing that, I think... I think like a teenager Lao one would have been stoked to do that. You yeah, know? it's yeah. a nice problem to have. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Uh, that's, yeah, uh... it's a nice problem to have. So uh, when I when I get to pick between going to work and <laughs> uh, you know signing stuff that I made, yeah, sign me up for that. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I for for me it's often the the thing when I think oh I could do another video or I could do like uh, another artwork and then you have like one week done with that and it doesn't really feel like you achieved a lot um but yeah um I, I yeah but uh, but when it comes to that i i always say myself yeah nobody's gonna watch at least it was like that before i had my uh, english channel um i'm i'm always telling myself it doesn't matter if i work on something because uh, people are busy when it comes to december so um posting something now wouldn't wouldn't be worth it anyway uh, and it, that is, in fact, true with my German channel, but with my English channel, it's not anymore. So, yeah, I get what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I noticed uh, Jaisa sent us a new, uh, a new super chat. Um, Happy New Year, my dudes. Can't wait to see you again at Dokumi. Thank you for the years of friendship, and I'm looking forward to many years to come. You can't get rid of me. Thanks We've so noticed much. that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have, like... Uh, on our discord we start i don't know where it started with the feed thing oh i it must have been like two nights ago i i, I wasn't there uh, i only saw the uh it was something aftermath. like like uh, so we have a few channels for, for uh, so we we have channels to post art in and then a separate channel to discuss and like make comments and, and all that so that the art channel is just really just one art piece after another right so you don't have to scroll too far and that channel Art Feed was uh, renamed to Art Feet with a T, um, without That's... our knowledge. And then, then there's a second one where, where it's just not safe for work art stuff. It's the same name, the same thing happened. And uh, one of our moderators, who is also in chat, called Souls the Yoshi, <laughs> um, soul as in like the soul, like the spirit, uh, is now called Souls like the part of the shoe. <laughs> And so we woke up and suddenly everything was feet themed. Related. That is funny. I, I... <laughs> I didn't change it back. <laughs> yeah, probably because we we've, uh, watched the Sonic movie and there uh, uh, was this prominent feet scene. I guess. Yes, yes. Oh, you watched the Sonic movie as well. We we finally watched it the the other week. The yes, first one. Yeah. yeah. I just In needed German to see if I. English. I think watch the English version. Yeah, because we we also watched the uh, Game Awards session where it got released, and there was the voice actor, and then we watched the movie. Right. The yeah. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. We watched it after. Yeah, the second movie was announced. That's it. Okay, yeah, I, I watched it uh, with a with a good friend um, back in back in November, I think, and we did that because that was like the last day, or the, I think it was the last day where it was on Amazon Prime before the license ran out um and i wanted to watch uh, and i wanted to watch it in german because julian bam a, a prominent german youtuber voices sonic does he is, is he convincing uh yeah i i think he's he's incredibly <laughs> like i was a bit shocked how how much he sounded like sonic he's he's pitching his voice a bit um which he also does in his podcast uh, sometimes so so you can kind of get where it comes from so it doesn't sound exactly like him but he does a very good job i urge you to to listen to him in a trailer or something um i was i was a bit shocked but i i had a good time also with um jim carrey being there of course that has to be a good time right <laughs> yeah i mean for for uh, what it is or what it was and and what it turned to i think it was a solid yeah, yeah I, I, i'm not watching this like <laughs> as, a, as a serious movie or something, I just you know I, I had fun with that. So yeah, I, I thought about the uh, the old 3D model they wanted to use for Sonic, <laughs> and they 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 flipped it to a like watchable movie. 
Um, yeah, I think I think that's that's at least that's my theory that they um, that they saw the you know Detective Pikachu one mm. and they thought that oh you know Pikachu works good in a, in a 3D realistic kind of style and that's why that's why you know Sonic's gonna look great like that as well and then there was some backlash and they were like oh yeah maybe we shouldn't have done that. I mean, there there are theories that it was kind of like planned beforehand. I, I can yeah, yeah, kind of I, I, see I, that because it's it would be a lot of work to redo everything. And incredible, like I don't know how much money this this costed to, you know, to <laughs> to redo the model and all the scenes with it. Um, I I don't believe it uh, either. I think this wouldn't have been worth it. You know, taking a shot at that uh, it, because it's also a gamble, right? Yeah, uh, we don't know how much how much attention this will attract. So I I don't think so. As well. But it fits the Sonic brand of being like chunky. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. To be honest, they they are kind of meme lords like that. I, I played once like a Sonic racing game, um, just before I got like the um, got to play Mario Kart. And after that Sonic game, I mean, it wasn't as good as like to begin with, but uh, especially with like comparing to another established race, I was like, oh damn, it's, it's sad, kind of sad. <laughs> but speaking of Pikachu, oh no, oh. <laughs> I've I've recently found something. So um, we're gonna we're gonna go on a little painting break. Yeah, yeah. I okay. think it can dry. It's at least dry in the middle, so I can put it on top. Maybe just flip through some good old uh, nostalgia. I, I had to check when this came out, and it's from 2001 or 2000, I think. Um, it was the in Deutsche Mark 2000. <laughs> Damn. Oh, yeah, the the funny thing about it. So so just to establish what what we are looking at here, um, when I think it was two thousand and four, uh, there this game was old by then. And this guidebook, like it's a guidebook for Pokemon Yellow, Red, and Blue, it was ten cents or ten yeah cents. It was euro. So it was quite cheap. <laughs> And that's why that's why we got it and then they had like kind of a lot of mistakes there but i thought it would be a funny thing to uh have a little trip uh back memory lane just to see uh, this uh gorgeous um design of the pages every page is like beautiful when you showed this to me my first thought was there's got to be a bunch of mistakes in there. Like, you don't yep. make a magazine like that with so many numbers and figures and don't make a typo anywhere. Yeah, yeah. There, there is... I think they said you can't get Mew in the editions. And I think... Yeah, technically, but you can still get it in a, <laughs> in a way. But yeah, they... Oh, the, these uh, these like uh, graphics or these, these sprites they printed that they take me back. I, I see them as a kid. I uh, think looking at that, I want to have the new Pokemon games to have the scale, <laughs> like, yep. like really this kind of. I mean, of course, the game uh, games were smaller compared, but I think the most recent one, like Sword and Shield, that I played, um, was kind oh, of small. Oh, you played it? I, yeah, I played the um, Sword version. And also like the DLCs, and I kind of liked that regardless of the graphics or whatever like you could complain about. The only complaint that I would have was that it's kind of small um, mm. because you have like two main areas and the rest is like just fluff between. And the DLCs felt like, okay, we have some legendary Pokemon left over and we want to make some more money yeah so so we, we just put them like into little caves next to each other so you can just go in there take it go in there take it and it's like okay that takes the cake yeah, that's, that sounds that sound incredibly boring because back in the day back in the day, <laughs> in back in the day you um you had like mewtwo wasn't even part of the story right 
I, uh, so in, in red and blue it was, but yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure you the you went. Fine in. You if, um, if you went uh, after defeating Pokemon League, uh, you had to go through this this cave where uh, where it was hidden. So it wasn't even part of the actual story. Yeah, but I think it has like this. Um, there was this. What is it called? Sinuba in the the Cinder Island. I'm not sure. Yeah, the Cinder Island. Yeah. Yeah, there you have like this diary book entries where you have like. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't. You know, it, it wasn't part of the actual story. You, you mean know, it was you like post-game content? You yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's true. Oh, here, here's what... Meanwhile, meanwhile, you, you you start out with you know having a glimpse at the legendary, and it's even on the box art. It <laughs> it didn't used to be in the first generation. Yeah, yeah, this is great. Uh, Mew, you can't catch it. That that aged poorly, in a technical <laughs> sense. <laughs> yeah, kind of because yeah, I mean, it just says here like you get it with special events or something like that. But um, yeah, called glitch in the game. I'm not even sure. I think they have also missing no in here, so it's. Uh, yeah, kind of. Oh, I just noticed that here are stickers everywhere. Like these are... You put these in? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. I guess there were stickers outside and we all stick them accordingly. Yeah, the, the one last funny thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Old Pokemon Stadium. That was the shit. Super nice. Looking at this, I, I kind of miss how, you know, magazines like that used to be. Nowadays, it's all so sleek and minimalist. Yeah, I mean... It's... I can so I can. <laughs> it's a lot, but I also like the gaming magazines. For a kid, it's uh, yeah, definitely a sight to behold. Also these mm -hmm. gadgets and stuff like that. And this is sad because uh, here would be like the um, diploma when you've catched all Pokemon, and we had the printer at the po uh, at that point and could print it out, but it's lost we can't read it anymore yeah nice <laughs> i just um when i did the twitch streams i um figured i could show uh some old stuff every once in a while so um that that um mangaka fan art magaz magazine was what i showed you at uh, dokumi that's something that i went on th uh, through to on twitch no. I mean, I could, I, I wouldn't complain if, if the whole stream was just flipping through old <laughs> magazines like that. I, I enjoy that. I mean, for for the next ones, I I still have like some uh, older Animania magazines where mm. I'm like uh, also at least one picture of um, my work is inside. So I have like the ones where I was printed in either because I I once won like a Zelda art contest. And also like the pimp my character uh, stuff, like they the had articles then written, and uh, yeah, that, that that's also in my head for future <laughs> future videos. <laughs> ah, those days when magazines were really a thing. <laughs> yeah, I I kind of miss that though, since you you know you have something haptical where you can some something physical where you can you know you can flip through without it being a PDF or something. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was often like also a way to find new music because I, I used to buy music magazines, um, and in like the the goth scene has like three major ones. So or had three, three major ones. I think one closed down because of a fire or something. Um, but that one was like a huge help to to find like new music because they always had these samples uh, like CDs in there. And um, yeah, that's. I think some of them are still publishing, but uh, the bands aren't the same ones <laughs> that I still know. <laughs> yeah, I still, I, I still use the same, the same method to find new music and new bands the way I did ten years ago. Is just <laughs> by watching AMVs. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey, have you heard about Breaking the Habit by Linkin Park? <laughs> yeah, I. I, I of, of course, I'm watching. I'm watching AMVs that came out this year. <laughs> that well, I would I would assume that there's still uh, like new AMVs being made that still use Breaking the Habit, though. I guess, yeah. It was it, it was like my favorite bands I discovered through AMVs, like Sum Forty One, Rise Against, Linkin Park. All of those had like 
all of those I discovered through AMVs. So, so you, I mean, that's new, yeah. Because Linkin Park was something where I was still watching MTV and Viva and stuff like that. That's where I, because I like the video of uh, crawling, because there was this uh, dark makeup girl, I think. <laughs> Dark yeah. makeup, dark makeup girl. Yeah, in, in the in the bathroom. Best character. <laughs> it's the the aesthetic that I I, I liked uh, or I still like. With, like the, I already I already know what I'm gonna do for our next Gartic phone session. Yeah, draw like uh, the the thing of Nightwish or no the the dark makeup girl from the crawling Lincoln Park video. Oh yeah, okay. With, with then the, you have to do it from memory with the mirror. Maybe that that one fan art I did of of Darius in like the doing the eyeliner. Oh yeah. Subconsciously. That's a bit. That's a bit crawling. <laughs> repeating the crawling yeah. error. <laughs> I honestly, when when you when you say that, when you say that that it reminds me of uh, it it reminds you of of you know the music video. I don't even know the music video. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> it's a lot of crystals and stuff. Yeah, that's that's also something I remember. Oh, that, that that's something you have to check out. Like old music videos were like uh, some classics. So and it's like uh, gorillas. Um, when when fe not feel good in like the first one. Like, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Like yeah. That, as a kid, that was like that oh. was the best stuff. It was amazing. Just every time that video went on on uh, Viva or MTV, it was like, oh, I have to I have to watch these three minutes. I, to, to be honest, I am kind of scared of that because I sometimes check out music videos to songs I like, and then I kind of like them less because the music <laughs> video. If the music video is bad, it's probably the uh, the label pushing them to do it because the, then they can release it. So. It's not a labor of love. So in that case, you can still say, "Yeah, they probably didn't want to do it." <laughs> yeah, okay, because I, I I reckon you you guys know uh, through the fire and the flames. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I'm a little sure. bit. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's not it's not my type of music. Oh, okay, yeah, because it's it's such a legendary song, and then I checked out the music video and it was like, like mid two thousand CGI, and it hurt my <laughs> eyes. But but there there is a place for that. I I've recently watched like old placebo videos, um, and there's I, I I forgot the song name. And um, there's one where they try to emulate that um, office shredder style. So when you have like paper that goes through a shredder, then it has like these stripes yeah. and they curl up. And mm -hmm. they they made it like that um, people curl up that way. Okay. It looks so weird. I don't so weird. remember that. It's like uh, they, they couldn't really figure out to get these curves like without polygons. Like so they are like kind of uh, edgy in a way. And it looks oh, again. Sorry. <laughs> so weird. Uh, but it, it gives me like the feels of watching old like Matrix style movie in a way like where it's like these Effects are kind of cheap, but they have kind of also a charm, but probably only when you have nostalgia for that. I mean, Matrix wasn't that bad. I, I, I remember it. they revolutionized uh, with, with that one shot that everyone's referencing. They kind of revolutionized uh, filmmaking with that, right? Yeah. I think it, it's yeah safe to say that with all the references made so far, they probably took uh, a it, huge impact. It, it had a big impact, yeah. and I think de deservedly so. And I also think that the, the sequels weren't bad, including yeah. the new one, which was really, really good. I liked it. <laughs> it was it was kooky in just the right way. And I think it's uh, still amazing that they managed to get all the old actors, except for a few, to do that, so... Yeah. I mean, did you did you watch what was it, the the Unreal Engine five demo? Yep, I saw that. I mean, with that with that in hand, you don't need actors anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you still need to capture some, but okay, like give it ten more years, and we don't even have to do the motion capture anymore. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. No, but that that definitely did look cool, and it kind of feels like this is this is actually a new step in terms of graphics. Whereas I feel like everything between like. PlayStation 3 era and like 
end of last gen kind of looked samey and like on the same level we didn't really have ray tracing and all that uh, sorry this is turning into a gaming stream by the way <laughs> um but yeah this this one like seeing that it feels like okay yeah now 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 we're on the next level which well, us pc gamers we've been there for a long time um but no it's i'm, I'm excited to see cool new stuff happening yeah, so am I because I mean it's also kind of a bit scary <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> well, kind of, because deep fakes will be so yeah. So much more, um, That's the sad thing, right? That's uh, similar to when uh, a few years ago Adobe pr uh, premiered the this technology where you kind of capture speech from somebody, like let's say twenty minutes, yeah, right? and then you can write a dialogue and it just it sounds really natural and you can you can do some evil stuff with that because how many people are out there doing live streams every day with little to no background audio so you can easily feed it in there it's it's i don't know i don't know how to feel about it i kind of i i was i was like progression in technology but yeah it also always has a dark side yeah but i i think that isn't a, quite a bad thing because we just need to know how to you know how Spot to it. manage this and how yeah. to how to tackle it so it's it's new uh, those are new challenges but we just need to know how to handle yeah. them by the way i really like the i really like the um the color choice on the on the short there uh oh you mean this this uh, pinkish <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, uh, to yeah. you know, to, to combine it with with this blue, uh, purple-ish kind of tin. It's um, it kind of was like, uh, I wasn't sure about it, so I'm glad <laughs> that you like it. But I was like, um, okay, uh, I have to do some other colors there because it looks boring if I don't. And I was like, um, I'll just go with whatever feels like, and I like purple, so. Uh, <laughs> It's like the same with the hair. It's oh, it has to be even darker. Like uh, I don't even know if I would do maybe like a pencil line art with colored pencils to get the eyes worked out more because I noticed that it smudges a bit away like the, with the um, sketch. But um, that's when I thought like okay, I can do also this purple thing <laughs> because this part is getting even darker. But yeah. It, it, yeah. point, it points like that, I I, uh, I also think digital art is easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think that's what makes this so cool, because you, you had so much thought put into this. And also, you, you risk you risk a lot by, you know, making this a one-time thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, for, for me, I think often that it's... Um, I, I have, I think, some other... So, so the thing I don't really like about traditional art is that often, I mean, so you, you, you learned this also the hard way, uh, I, I know, know, I remember that, um, that when the paper doesn't play along, that there's so much out of your control. I often think it's not really warranted <laughs> that that things turn out the way they do, and uh, I often have like things where um, I'm not sure if you can even see that because I tried to seal it off with colored pencils, but the paper tore there, and uh, here is like the where is it the tape that ribbled off the the paper. And yeah, but that happened like like that happens to me all the time. But yeah, it's, it's, I um, you know, know like for example, uh, paper tearing when uh, when you rip off the tape. I I don't pay that any mind to be honest because you don't notice it anyway. Even when people flip through my artworks, they don't they can't tell to be honest. And for me, it's uh, when when I'm doing like stuff on stream um, because like that one wasn't. I, I often think like okay, I, I'm setting myself uh, self up for failure, so it's not as bad. But I often hate it when you have like all the control basically, and then these things. I'm I'm not sure like. It's, I, I, I'm kind of like a perfectionist in a way that when I have the original artwork, I want it to be like neat, <laughs> like like the most perfect version of that thing. And uh, yeah, I know that with this one, um, when I uh, taped it on the table, 
and I had to retape it because it went a bit like uh, what is it called like not in line um, yeah like the paper here is <laughs> torn and so my attitude towards this is kind of like ah okay yeah <laughs> it will work but nobody's gonna notice that right yeah I, I mean it's it's uh, maybe because when I'm not doing it like for a client or something uh, then it's really really bad that also happens like I had one uh, guy that that uh, wanted to have like a portrait from himself, a like commission, and uh, I, I think the result was great. But when I, um, yeah, took the tape off, and it had all like these tiny little things there, and I, I mean, what can you do? You can do basically nothing. But my my um, heart broke when that happened, and when I'm doing it just for fun, I mean, sure, uh, but still, you kind of drawing it for yourself and then I'm not sure like ah, may maybe I should just work in inside the block <laughs> hmm? did he complain about it though? oh that was funny actually so um, yeah he, he paid a good amount of money <laughs> okay. also for shipping and um, yeah when I shipped it it came back like maybe a month later because he wanted to explicitly ship it uh, to a P.O. box that he had okay. um, but he never uh, picked it up so it came back and then okay, I thought so it all. yeah I mean I, I thought okay clearly <laughs> it was like his duty to pick it up so I wait till he maybe get in contact again so we can set up a new uh, yeah way to ship it because I wouldn't want to ship it again when one time it hasn't worked so okay uh, but he never never said anything so <laughs> the picture is like uh, has found its way inside like the portfolio folder and is, is, is waiting but I'm not sure like it's the same uh, I also had that happen um, with like other original artworks that weren't just like not picked up they were not so, so basically you have you have like a portrait from some random guy you don't know laying around in your portfolio yes yes i, I don't th see it as like different as from the girl portraits because <laughs> i mean they don't exist in the first place but uh it's also pretty random like who are they though um but yeah, the, this one kind of was, it was really custom because we talked about the color schemes, we talked about like, um, so we wanted it to be very vibrant, very rainbowy in a way, uh, but not too much, not that it's like hurting your eyes. And I, I think I figured out like a pretty good middle ground between that, but yeah, it doesn't, I mean, I think that when it, uh, when I um, shipped it to him, I also posted the final picture, like the end result, uh, tagged him and stuff like that, and also got no reaction out of it, which, of course, I I don't know, but he could have... I mean, as you got paid, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that one was like the, probably, yeah, the, the um, main thing that, that worked. So I, I didn't really bother uh, with, um, yeah getting it uh, shipping it to him without his consent basically because i i'm not sure like mm. wh when does it happen that you give someone a po box and then <laughs> you don't pick it up like it's kind of weird um but yeah i know that that also happened with like other uh especially people from china <laughs> when it's like even exp extra expensive to ship it there and then it comes back and you think like oh damn Damn, it's another time. <laughs> you say especially China, but isn't China like the same price as uh, as you know USA or Australia? Yeah, but but the originals don't go there as often as they go to China. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, so you got more the originals China. have more higher shipping uh, costs because of insurance and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah they're... 
it's, um, so it's you, you have more of a client base in China actually for the originals <laughs> everything else not really um, but uh, the, yeah the originals tend to go some like the majority of them yeah. tend to go to China for some reason they were like yeah. Taiwan I, I, interesting because because it kind of it kind of says something about about Chinese people that they value that they kind of value original art that yeah. much right I would yeah. say so I mean that that one guy that, where it uh, reached him um, after all um, he also like sent me a huge bulk of like um, brushes and paper that that paper that I sent you like I sent you like this uh, sample pack self-made thing um or did thomas did give it to you didn't he <laughs> uh the pa the, the just watercolor paper samples in that <laughs> i i know he said he got it but i don't think he ever passed it on to me <laughs> <laughs> i mean he sent me a photo of it i remember but i remember that but i can't remember if he actually handed it over <laughs> he's lying around there in his shrine in his Laovan shrine maybe he becomes a watercolor artist himself <laughs> no, but i mean it was it was labeled for you especially like, uh, but um but uh, there, there's like chinese paper inside that was like uh, a cut of the uh, paper that also was sent to me by that um yeah man from Taiwan, I think, and mm. uh, that, that was pretty cool, although I had to go through customs, so it wasn't really for free, it wasn't, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, that that was kind of great, like, uh, they, um, I think, really enjoy also watercolor, specifically that. Uh, by the way, there's a few things that I've collected just now, which is, first up, we have a result on uh, which be which Darius does best Darius, mm. and uh, a narrow win of sixty to forty percent is naked Darius. <laughs> okay, I, I know what I'll do in the future. Thank you. <laughs> well, lo now you know the split that you need to produce. So, yeah. sixty percent of your artwork should have him not wearing any clothes. <laughs> um, the other bit being, so somebody asked, uh, what kind, uh, what brush is currently being used? Because it's a little hard to see on the camera. Because oh, I mean, you're uh, using it. It's uh, the the cheap one. <laughs> uh, oh. oh, what? <laughs> oh, maybe it overheated. I think it's a secret message. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's too hot. Oh, it may be getting too hot. We're, we're nearing the like two hour mark. Ah, uh, damn. The oh, aliens no. haven't made the stream. They send <laughs> us messages. <laughs> no signal. <laughs> um, yeah, let's hope it will work for a bit more. Um, that's a synthetic brush, uh, a cheap one. Um, okay. I, I use like the uh, 200, no, 120 euro natural sable brush thing to make everything wet because it uh, basically, what is it, like uh, hovers over the paper without damaging it. While this one is great to um, pull and push the color pigment stuff around. And so um the cheap one the cheap one you're using i think i've got the same one it's a da vinci one isn't it um it's i think it's the same from the um the same manufacturer but different in label in a way yeah it's uh, so this one is from the art store ed i'm not sure if you have it at your mm. um but yeah, it's their home brand basically but it's it feels yeah, yeah. the same as the da vinci ones i think maybe i have one old somewhere around here because that's the thing like it's the same with the colors at certain points i just go with what i can easily uh, acquire with not always having to order it online and this is uh, just a local thing but i think all the older da vinci brushes i they got yeah <laughs> lost over time i only have like those special Thing brushes that are uh, from Da Vinci. Speaking of Da Vinci, um, can you pronounce Van Gogh again? Van Gogh. <laughs> isn't that right? It's, it's, it's Van Gogh, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah. This one was a cool one. It's also like a Da Vinci brush um, that has uh, natural hair or something. 
Um, and I saved it from the trash because I once had like uh, a watercolor workshop uh, at a convention and they brought like rubbish brushes that they could give to the um, attendees. So yeah, it kind of was like to make it all cheaper. And this was so crusted and, and damaged and I could save it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really was like uh, also like the... Uh, varnish or whatever this is uh, is damaged but it does its job so yeah. it was free <laughs> free brushes by the way you you pissed off Jaiser with your pronunciation of Van Gogh oh <laughs> what, 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 what? I led you into that trap what, 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 <laughs> what, what in, in school they always said it like that in school they they, they don't teach it right <laughs> <laughs> Is it is it Van Gogh though? Van Gogh, Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Um, another thing, because I like I, I watched you prepare this drawing for for the stream and uh, you doing it mostly digitally. So here's a question from a little bit early in the stream. I, I don't know whether the person's still watching, but uh, what do you think about doing line art digitally and then printing it on watercolor paper, which I think you have done in the past this one is also done like that oh. i can i can i missed that part of you printing it then i just didn't uh, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> no so what i usually do uh, and you can tell whether that was my method usually when i tape the paper down because then i had the opportunity to put this paper in the printer um which when i work from the block like inside the block that there's another method where you print out like your um whatever your sketch like mirrored and then transfer it with uh, like pens or something but yeah i print out the liner the digital one with like a very light yellow <laughs> just because afterwards i can tape it down and wash that ink up uh, away when i um, trace it with the pencil so usually so you so, so you actually, uh, what is it? Is it an inkjet printer? Yeah, yeah. It's um, like the the Canon A three printer. The yeah, an inkjet. Yeah, yeah. And usually, like the the ink does wash out. You can't. It's not waterproof. So mm -hmm. what I usually do is like I, I take a brush like this where uh, there's a lot of water, and then after I trace the yellow printed line out with a pencil. I just take this brush with a full load of water, wipe everything off because you don't want any stains to be there after. Yeah, yeah, because because that's that's right. That's what I just wanted to ask. Because isn't there always a bit yellow left then? A slight bit. Um, if you do it like, if you have luck, <laughs> I don't want yeah. to say if you do it correctly because it's kind of depending. But if you have luck, it, there's nothing else there. That's. Um, something let's see i think is it here oh damn again yeah you can you can kind of like see it or you can't see it here this was also done in a way like this uh, there, there is no yellow line or something it's kind of here because i screwed up a bit but also it looks intentional because <laughs> it kind of looks like the sunlight with uh, the hair so it, it, it works. I, I think that I, I never heard of that method actually. So it's uh, I, I think that's quite interesting. It's, it's cheating. <laughs> it's cheating oh, yeah. though. If You're you, cheating. If you, if you don't do it, uh, which happened here, I didn't do it for this one. Then the head is far too big for the rest of the body, and that's something which I think that's who, who, just I I know that's kind of nitpicky, but who determines that because i also <laughs> tend to think about that oh yeah you don't have to you you, you can't you can't draw a women a women's heads too you know too small because then they look too broad shoulder but but then i see other artists drawing them a bit broader so who who determines that i think the the drawing you just showed look quite good so i i didn't i i wouldn't have said the uh, that the head looked off or something let me I, i'm not sure if i let me zoom out. Maybe it. I think it's maybe because it looks a bit more grown up, but that's not a bad thing. I. I mean, people in Czech can determine, but I think the I like head it. looks all right. It's good. Is is the head too big for me? It. it was... Let, let's make it a poll. <laughs> I think. I think it looks perfect that way. Is the head too big? 
Also, can you just uh, uh, to make it to make it a bit more clear? Can you just put it uh, besides your actual drawing? You know, uh, so you can compare. I think I think I think the proportions even oh. look a bit more um, a bit more realistic. You could say. I'm not sure. For me, it was when I did it. So I thought, okay, this part here is too short for my taste. I would have liked to have more space here, but then again, he would look like hovering or something. And I didn't really know where to go with this. So I thought, okay, do something else. So it breaks a bit like the, the pattern of just like the stomp of the body or something. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was, yeah, then like a day after I thought, oh, the head is too big. And then I thought, okay, I can correct like anything afterwards but that was kind of the way that i didn't get back to work on this drawing again and so i left it unfinished it's like man looking at this makes me want to draw water <laughs> again. it's so i i people always tell me the same thing but it's <laughs> it's actually inspiring Can to look at that and the way you uh, the way you rendered like the clothing the way you know uh, on the right side it's a bit brighter and on the left i think that that's the kind of stuff that makes me want to you know get painting again and i just painted a couple of days ago <laughs> <laughs> um thank you <laughs> uh, but uh yeah yeah for me it was you can tell that the face was uh, what i spent most of my uh, attention to yeah, yeah 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 and then later on like the body i'm usually more quicker like doing that digitally and i kind of try to have that same shading style i'm not sure if you can kind of see that this what was here was basically the shading that i did for like uh, that cloud and sephiroth artwork i'm not sure if you remember that but it has had ha has had the same structure from there and then i thought but he is clothed so i have to pay attention that it's clothed and you can't see enough uh, or see see too much of like the uh, yeah muscles and stuff like that, and um, yeah that that's also kind of where I think I gave up. But um, yeah, I'm I'm glad that it inspires. Do you, do you have like a time lapse of this one? Mm, not really, no. <laughs> it was something I did like uh, on the side. Um, ah, okay. People said no, the head is just right. Um, Okay, I mean, I can I can try and, and work on it again <laughs> if I know like I mean, a background. I mean, it's also just it's it's also a matter of expression. Did you ever look at um, what was it? Did you ever look at Tokyo Revengers art? I've seen like <laughs> uh, Instagram. What? It just always brings me back to that moment in Dokumi where somebody looked at the Darius uh, thing that you had, the, the stand stand up, and yeah. uh, pointed at it from like afar and said, "Oh, look, that's Tokyo Revengers!" And like he wouldn't, he wouldn't back down. His friends were like, "No, I'm sure it's not him." No, it's him. It's him. And they left, and then like they came back a minute after, like asking, "Is is this guy from Tokyo Revengers?" Like this guy? No, no, no. This dude isn't even out yet. Like it's not. It, it's just the character, yeah. <laughs> no, I, um, I, I, I've only seen, I think, that one guy that has the side cut with the tattoos. That's something because a friend has a cosplay done of that. But yeah, it's Draken. No, but in Tokyo Revengers, the art always looks like their necks are, like, huge. Like, <laughs> I, I think double the size you drew right there. Wow. Well, it's that their necks are like huge, but you mean like who, on the who left? Who am I to say that it's <laughs> who am I to say that that's that's a wrong thing? You know, like yeah. if he prefers it that way, then that's okay. No, I mean after all, it's I think it's really style. Oh no, the camera! Oh, damn. Uh, Maybe we should take a break in a little bit because we haven't taken a break at all so far. What? What? what uh, yeah. What do you? What do you suggest? Then? <laughs> uh, just taking a quick break so everybody can uh, can get hydrated and that. You know, the, the kind of just let's take a break because we've been streaming non stop for two and a half hours. Okay. So, so can you put something? I can put something on screen for a break, yes. And when will we, like, j just for, for insiders, will uh, I, I'm going to stay in the call, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're just yeah. going to stay in the call. I'm going to route our audio out of the live stream so we can still talk. But, uh, okay. yeah, just give me a second. Okay, just to reboot the camera. <laughs> yes, so we're going to take a short break, everybody, and uh, we'll be back in... Uh, oh, yeah, I can't do that, so I can't... Ah, now ah, no, i got to add something there. Um, hang on. Uh, that's That sucks, because I, I would... <laughs> for, for these um, background things, I wanted to actually use 
the camera itself, but now that doesn't work. Uh, but I have something here that we can just put in there real quick. Uh, just like that. Transition. Uh, does it work? Is it not working? No, it's not working. There we go. Okay, so we're going to be back in a few minutes. We just need to uh, cool the camera down just a little bit, get something to drink. You should probably too. You should get something to drink. Uh, yeah, get up from your chair or from your bed or wherever you are. And... Uh, do a little bit of pep workout. If you don't know what that is, Marcel is going to explain you all about it in, in just a few minutes. So, uh, yeah. See, see, see you in a bit. So, so we... Hang on.
And we're back. Just turn the camera back on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Should be back. Here we go. Yes. Indeed. We are. Thanks for sticking with us. Check, check. Yep. Okay. Yep. I need to turn the music down now that we're speaking again. It was just uh, thinking I usually I would do this step with the eyelashes with colored pencils. But I don't have like a pencil sharpener with me and also the shine of the pencil makes it basically impossible for me to see why I already did it so I do a few lines with the watercolor and hope it doesn't reactivate or that I'm careful enough to do that. Also um, when, when, when talking about this motive how long do you think you're still at this because everything that's lacking are shadows right? Um, yes, and I mean, for me, it's it would be more kind of like going more for rendering. So I would, um, I've basically placed like basic colors there, um, but uh, it all isn't really fleshed out. So I would try to, yeah, render it more. For example, for the hair, it's, uh, it would be, I think, a bit for, uh, for, for me at least to um, easy to say the shadows are the only thing that's missing because I think also the volume and, and that would mean for me that the actual painting would be trying to get like each strand of hair and, and do it kind of like I do with digital work where I try to um, yeah, create little gradients from light to dark to make it yeah, stand out a bit um, but th that's usually what, what takes the most time uh, in the end. It's uh, for me easier, at least for a live stream, to start a painting <laughs> than to finish it. Because when you start, something happens on screen. And finishing <laughs> it is kind of like really uh, minor details that in the end convey like the picture. They, they, they uh, support um, the, the, um, yeah, the image or... Um, appearance uh, but yeah it's kind of like that uh, stuff where I mean I could just zoom in <laughs> and then do every everything from that but um, yeah though I still can do the the bench it's left with uh, no color So, um, back when you said uh, that you played the new Pokemon, did you play like all of the Pokemon so uh, came out or just the newest one? I think I played them all, but I don't remember every <laughs> every every game. I, I didn't play I didn't play Sun and Moon and Sword and Shield. I th these ones I, I played both. Um but so Sword and Shield I think has had like the bigger shift in um, aesthetic or um, mm -hmm. gameplay wise uh, but sun and moon I d it's difficult it, it's the same like I, I remember red blue then gold silver uh, ruby and sapphire and from that it gets diamond. blurry for me <laughs> uh, from then on out it's diamond and pearl ah okay uh, after that it's black and white then it's uh, after black and white, it's X and Y, and after that, it's um, it's the remakes like uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and after that, it's Sun and Moon, and after that, it's yeah, Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield. Which one was the game you started with uh, the Pokemon games? Um, I like I I saw my cousins play um play the original ones like Red and Blue back in the day but I wasn't allowed to have a console myself and then when I my, my first ever console was um, that I myself had without having it to share with someone um, my first one was uh, a Game Boy Advance hmm. and for that I got I think it was uh, Sapphire yeah yeah that's I think I got Ruby but from this version I think it's still my favorite generation <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think I also that uh, Hoenn is also my favorite region from them all. It's, I, I like how tropical it is. 
Yeah, I, I love the the secrets, like the thing where you had to go to your instructions uh, to see like how the Braille uh, writing is decoded to get the Reggie Pokemon. The Reggies, yeah, mm. I I I was too dumb for that. The, the, for me, it was kind of uh, like it still had the magic of video games where you think like there's something that I don't know there's something that is like they also had this uh, Wonder Island or Wonder Island theory thing oh yeah like the event one yeah yeah that was like kind of next level for, for what I expected of these games uh, because Missing No obviously was the first time you encountered something like that um But these... uh, missing no was Gen 2 already. M missing no was, I think, in, in red and blue. Yeah, that was yeah. Gen 1. Yeah. Uh, no, missing no was in Gen 2. Is there something for red and blue? Was it in both? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm I'm like 90% sure missing no uh, first came in gold and silver. Missing no was. I only ever had red and blue, and I have yeah. vivid memories of missing no. No, it's it's like on the side of of the C yeah. Cinema Island, yeah. So missing no was a thing also in red and blue. That that one, because I, I remember like the, um, what is it like school talk <laughs> yep. in the break. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Missing no. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I I mistook that. I mistook that for for incognito. <laughs> ah. Oh. No, no, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, missing no was like the glitch thing in Gen 1, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's how that, that uh, event with One Island and, and stuff like that felt, like, oh, there's something that isn't supposed to be here. But <laughs> yeah, I, but that kind of got lost since, um, since now you have the internet where people, you know, they confirm or, um, or debunk theories like that in no mm. time. Yeah, yeah. That's... Oh, that, man, the kind of mysteries back in the day that you couldn't just verify it like I'm, i'm specifically thinking of this kind of stuff like did you ever play uh tomb raider 3 i don't think i was allowed to ah <laughs> uh, that so uh it starts you out in her mansion where that's basically where the tutorial is like you learn how to move around and jump and climb and do all that stuff and she has a yeah. butler like following her around like it's super like super simple ai it's just like slowly he, the guy approaches you just with his with his tray of stuff and that there, there's no real interaction possible but what you can do is you can walk into the freezer in your kitchen and the door opens with a button so you walk in there you wait for him to approach you then you run out hit the button and then then he's stuck in there like haha that's that's a cool joke but from that you got like schoolyard theories like oh if you wait three hours he dies and then you can see the spirit that is stuck <laughs> in the freezer it's like this is bullshit but maybe it's not. And then so you left your PlayStation on all the night just to figure out whether that actually happens. Yeah, I remember I remember um, rumors like that. I, I kind of miss them, to be honest, because right now you can just debunk or um, you can debunk or confirm things like that in no time. Yeah, But I... also talking about Pokemon, will you play the one that's coming out this month? I am not sure. I, I would have to figure out which uh, game that was <laughs> because they mix them up. Um, so it's uh, Legends Arceus. Uh, oh, the, so the, yeah, I'm. I don't know. Like I, I've seen the trailer. That one didn't really hook me up as much. Um, it didn't. Mm -mm. It's, it's just also because it's called Arceus, and I don't know why the hell they picked this one because. Yeah, because it's the because it's the Sino region. Yeah, for me it's just like okay. I don't remember that game where that came from. So. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's it's kind of like uh, if if they went for like Mew or Celebi or like the the ones that I, I, I at least have some memories of. But it's like that that I I can't remember which Pokemon game it was where that green-haired guy with I think he's just called N or something. Because I played that yeah. game, I have. Is it is it that that gets remade now? Because I don't know. <laughs> uh, you mean the one that has been remade? Yeah. I... Um, th that's uh, that was Diamond and Pearl. That was the one before it, and it kind of makes sense because this new uh, Legends Arceus, like the one with Arceus, mm -hmm. um, that that's the Sinnoh region. That's the fourth gen. That's Diamond and Pearl, the one that has been remade right ah, now. Ah, yeah. Okay. And I, I probably might give it a try. I don't know. Like I gave Sword and Shield a try, 
Um, and in the end, there are not as many Switch games at the moment that I could play. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, um, I don't know if you how much you know about this, but um, people are kind of hyped, me included, have been kind of hyped about it because, you know, it was like Breath of the Wild Pokemon, like the way mm -hmm. everyone always wanted to play Pokemon. Um, and then it turned out it isn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, just you know, it's it's kind of like a monster hunter Pokemon. It's not a free world. You can you can only port yourself to that location, which was so disappointing to hear. <laughs> the but chat is I, saying I, chat is saying huh? the one with N was Pokemon Black and White. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's like that's what I said. Uh, but N mm. uh, came after Diamond and Pearl. Oh uh, yeah, okay. I, I, th th that's the thing. Like I, I, I played them. I from from uh, Ruby and Silver. I have no idea. I couldn't call the the uh, order in which they came, unless it's like the remakes, like Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and Omega. Like Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Yeah. yeah that, that, I, I mean, that's sad, right? I, I, <laughs> I played all of them. <laughs> I mean, it's not sad. It's a massive franchise. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at some point, you just think like, okay. Um, I, I we already it always felt like we were buying them double because me and my brother of course we, we only had just one one console like one game advance but we had to buy like both Pokemon games because everyone wanted to have their own edition but it's yeah, yeah. basically the same game so you buy like two time like yeah two times the same game in a way so even if it's like different editions but in the in the end, it's the same game, and then you buy two times the remake of the same game, so you have four times the same game in a way. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I get what you mean with that, but yeah, meanwhile, it's just it's like um, me and my brother, one of us buys it, and the other one just you know plays along or you know plays it on a different account. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a smart move. <laughs> ah, by the way, um, speaking of accounts, when you had Sword and Shield. Do you have like a new save state when you switch your um, user? Oh, uh, I think it can be. Yeah, I think it can happen. I'm not sure yet because I know that my brother had like also the other version. Like he, she, uh, he had uh, shield, um, and I think I. <laughs> Because I needed like the starters, I um, asked if it was okay to just start from new and um, delete the progress you made to get my Pokemons. And I did that. And then afterwards, I thought, well, could I have just used like another account for that? And I think that was possible, but I'm not sure yet. It's a bit, yeah, it's been a while, but. I think that was possible, and I deleted it for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. So anyway, that's but that's that's my strategy. I'll let my I'll let my brother play the new Pokemon game first, and if I know it's good, then I'll just I'll just borrow it from him. <laughs> <laughs> that that saves a bit of money. Um, I mean, I know it's, it's not just money; it's also kind of your bad feeling when you buy something. Yeah. And then you, you don't have the time to actually, you know. It's, it's definitely a, a smarter move than what we did because my brother didn't play it after I uh, deleted the his um, uh, save game. Um, in the end, he didn't want to continue it anyway. That's why it was for me okay to delete it. But yeah, mm -hmm. it was just then a copy basically wasted for me getting a starter Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> that's a noble sacrifice. Yeah, that, that, that's why Pokemon is so huge as a company. <laughs> yeah, that's why Game Freak doesn't have to give a shit anymore and just pump out stuff. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's the most profitable uh, franchise ever. Yeah, yeah. sounds about right. It's, uh, it, it even it even caught up to Star Wars and Hello Kitty and stuff. It, it yeah, it's it's the most profitable franchise of all of all time. I mean, for for me, it always was more surprising that uh, Hello Kitty ranks so high up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's <laughs> like a it's like an Asian thing. There's that's like a huge popular uh, a huge population over there, so yeah. you can't quite estimate that. And um, 
Yeah, no, for, for me, the, the sword and shield uh, thing, I... Uh, it was so short as a game, I felt like, that uh, I, I actually um, managed to collect all the Pokemon. <laughs> In sword and shield? Yeah. Um, it was only like with the last DLC, like the DLC that they had like the um, island? The yeah, summer I, I, and the, the winter island, and um, yeah, like with the first one, I still had them. I was lucky with like the wonder tausch thing, um, mm, and got, wonder trade. Huh? Yeah, I got exactly the ones that were missing because they weren't in that edition, and I mm. couldn't be bothered to just play what my like play as far with my brother's game so yeah yeah yeah. i get that it would be kind of boring yeah. um do you have like other games that you're looking forward to in 2022 because there are a lot of games coming out this year like incredibly much let's hope we get breath of the wild too yeah i was about to yeah, say like like, like <laughs> that for example yeah but that's not really been announced or like it doesn't have a date so mm. yeah but it's gonna come out this year like uh, everyone i wouldn't be too about sure about that I'd rather they take their time, but... I mean, yeah. I'd, I'd rather they take their time too, but I don't think they are pushing it another year. Yeah, that's true. I also think like when they are working with what they already had from the... Um, the asset. Yeah, yeah the uh, first one. It would but be kind of weird. I don't weird. think they're going to be recycling that much. I think what we got to see in the trailer was the stuff they had made with the reused assets, but I can't imagine that their art department is just going to sit on their thumbs. I'm yeah. Exactly my thoughts. Yeah. But that that one, it would be huge if that came out. Uh, oh, the Sonic open world. <laughs> yeah, Frontiers. Bre Breath of the Sonic or whatever. <laughs> yeah, Sonic Frontiers, I think it would. Uh, I don't know, any games. I'm looking forward to next month. I think from next month on, I'm, I'm not going to see the light of the day again when Elden Rings comes out. Yeah, I, I, I see a lot of hype around that. Yeah, because uh, the, they already released like a closed beta mm -hmm. demo, I think it was. And uh, they, they put up some gameplay. Or a lot of YouTubers put up some gameplay. German, English, all ah. of them internationally. And it's it looks incredible. It looks so good. I think that, of, of course, it, it's going to have its mistakes and stuff. Or it's downsides, but uh, from what I so I've seen, this is this is gonna be incredible. But what kind kind of game is it? I, I haven't seen it. Um, it's a Dark Souls open world game. Uh... But but the story, but the story is written by the guy by R. R. Martin, so it's written by the guy who wrote Game of Thrones. Ah, okay. I mean, that the Dark Souls would, uh, but Game of Thrones, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just like I, I just like Dark Souls. I, I never played it to be honest, but I just like the the thing that Dark Souls is going for. I like I like playing hard games because I think in recent memories there haven't been a lot of games that are like hard hard. If you I mean both of you guys remember how how hard games were when oh, they yeah. came out in the nineties or early two thousands, they were like insanely hard. I mean, remember the first Pokemon, for example. Um, <laughs> compared to the one that's that's out now i i i, I kind of miss miss hard games like that yeah i tried uh, sekiro um yeah yeah that's that's a souls like game yeah. yeah and that was for me like i i i i, I like the aesthetic i like the visuals i liked all that um but I saw no point <laughs> in just spending hours of, of trying to get like the because the the main game is okay like it's doable but when the bosses come then it's like uh, yeah that, that that's not really easy and um, at a certain point I thought like okay what what even is the purpose who am I trying to impress well here? I guess <laughs> one of the purposes is that you would want to experience the world like that it that it's set in which brings me to a recommendation because i've just been alerted to the fact that apparently at least in the us hyperlight drifter is on sale on the switch so on the nintendo oh. e-store mm. hyperlight drifter is a pretty hard game and it's got great atmosphere and i love it so if, if you're into that sort of thing um i don't know whether it's on sale in germany right now i don't know whether you've played it marcel but uh yeah hyperlight drifter is badass it's um it's been on it's actually been on my on my watch list for like Years, I think. Oh, in that case, you really want to play it. 
Like I, I also had yeah, it on my watch list just... for a long time, and then I at some point I pulled the trigger, which is something we learned earlier today. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's it's great. It's it's a yeah. It's game. just because um, I I I saw the aesthetic and I think it looked pretty good, and I yeah. But if it's a hard game, I'll give it a shot because yeah. that's that's just what I said. Uh, like for example, the the Final Fantasy VII remake mm. also wasn't that hard to me, and I kind of missed how. Did you try you know, it on hard mode? Old. So the the one that you unlock after playing it once. Mm, I've yeah, been told but have, it's but I, but I, I don't I don't want to you know uh, give it a time of my day. To okay, play yeah, that's right. understandable. I, I mean, I also didn't do it, but I heard that it's a pretty pretty substantial hard mode because of yeah, the limitations. But, but but that's the thing. Um, hard mode. What's the difference in hard mode? Hard mode's the difference uh, is, is the only difference that your your enemies are making more damage. Uh, not in the remake. You one of the big things is I think you can't use any items. Yeah, that's also pretty good, but I think the um, the uh, the way, or at least I perceive the the way that uh, games were a bit more difficult back in the day was because I I thought the mechanics made it a bit more right, difficult, yeah. was more limiting. Yeah, the, yeah. The the point of a hard mode should be that it it makes you really want to understand all the mechanics and use them well. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what they should do, not just make bullet sponges. Which is also the reason why I mostly don't play games on hard mode. Dude, you're just, I, I'm, I'm so glad you're here because you're, you're putting into so f into a few words what I'm trying <laughs> to build with a couple of sentences. <laughs> yeah, that's, so I, like, I've, I've been thinking a lot about that kind of stuff. The well, thing is, Hyperlight Drifter uh, yeah. can't be as difficult. Oh, oh, <laughs> now, okay. Yeah, tell the story. Go ahead. Do, tell the story. Uh, was it, uh, Ecolox uh, is a huge fan of uh, the game and he played it and um, then it, it came around like you were playing it alone and I, I was playing it alone and then you I think you yeah you came over and I was at the last boss and I was I was having a real hard time on that last boss and yeah. just for fun I handed him the controller <laughs> and he beat the the, le the boss without having played any of the games so far he just first try <laughs> not was it first try yeah. at, at least okay it was for this, that's why it was so memorable yeah it, it, it that was insane <laughs> like I just taught him the basic controls not even any of the, like special items or anything and he just beat it yeah. so but it was still hard believe me <laughs> yeah yeah it's that was funny oh so Lao Wan's kind of a certified gamer grill yeah yeah for, for totally for that boss with uh, with the Sekiro it was a different thing <laughs> it was just annoying. but you know i kind of get that i kind of get that because my little brother uh do you remember uh, did one of you guys play i i think if one of you play then maybe it's uh, maybe it's matt but did you play like one of the dragon ball games no i didn't i played the PlayStation 1 games, like Final Bout and Ultimate 20. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and I I was pretty good at them and I I, I didn't, I, I just, I, I was just too bad to fight the, uh, the last boss. And my brother has never played it before and he was like, he was just mashing buttons <laughs> and he was just winning. And it's like that with every fighting game and I'm just, it's, yeah, I kind of hate that. Too much uh, going on in your head with strategies and could yeah. have been solved easily. <laughs> it's just it's it's such a meme, but it's also it's also just the way it is. You, someone just mashing buttons gets a lot further than someone who thinks out an actual strategy. Yeah, that's what I think was uh, my the p appeal for me with Kingdom Hearts because it looks like I had strategy, but I was just. <laughs> <laughs> pressing anything oh that was also a game that i that i wasn't looking forward to but i saw it and i thought it was like amazing but uh, amazing looking um did you hear of this did you hear of this this game for the ps5 it was like a very simple title it was like one word for forsaken for spoken was it was it there for spoken i think yeah, yeah, Forspoken. It looked so good, but I don't know anything about it. I think they only really showed a trailer at the Game Awards, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I think I think I only saw a trailer, not even gameplay. But yeah. it looked so good. It looked like looked like an looked uh. like Final Fantasy fifteen successor kind of. Yeah, I wonder what that will look like in the end with uh, the new Final you mean, Fantasy. You mean Final Fantasy sixteen or what? Yeah, because yeah, I I. I 
I'm also I'm ho also hyped for that because it looks like you know Final Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy The Witcher kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah excited for how how it will turn out gameplay wise because I hope it it, it doesn't become a Dark Souls. <laughs> Yeah, no, I it think kind of has this Final Fantasy Roy. This look to it. Oh yeah, or like Final Fantasy uh, 13. Um, that one I, I never really... I'll be honest, I would like to have a new Final Fantasy that's more like the old Final Fantasies in terms of... Um, Colorfulness. Though. Yeah, like colorful, a little bit goofy, a little bit cartoony. Like... So you mean the vibe? Yeah. 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 Like a Final Fantasy 9, like a new Final Fantasy 9 would be cool. <laughs> so Final Fantasy Nine so isn't even like, Final Fantasy Nine isn't even my favorite, but I would still like to see another Final Fantasy Nine. So you you, you don't like to so you don't like to kill chaos. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I do. Maybe I do enjoy that. Like if they don't take themselves too seriously and like and, and when it's, it's like too dark and too edgy, it's like we've we've had plenty of games like that like g give me something new oh i would love if uh, a new final fantasy 7 remake part comes out <laughs> at some point yeah that would be swell it's like you wait for yeah. 20 years for a remake and then you get like a, a shard of a game yeah. and then you think okay uh, i'll be 50 or something when the next part is out yeah but to be honest I don't think it's quite that bad since, you know, the, if what you got in this part was was pretty much a whole game, so. Yeah, uh, the thing is, I've never played the original, so for me it's like okay. From what I've heard, um, I expected much more. <laughs> it, this has been a frequent yeah, yeah, point yeah, of discussion of, of in this household. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course, of course, the whole game. Uh, you don't get the whole game, but uh, what you got was basically a complete game if you for, for me it, it felt original. like i got a subscription model <laughs> that, that <was laughs> yeah I, kind that, of that's, like, a, that's a nice description yeah, yeah and I, I didn't want i wanted to have a remake i, I mean it looks great and all it would just be the fun. density is immense it would be great too like it, it i've i've I got my money's worth out of that. It's not. It, it feels alive, and uh, it's not only about like the money thing. It's more like okay, I'm going. We have to wait now for an un, yeah, yeah, counted amount of time. Like That's, we don't know. Ga games take time. Games take a lot of time. But yeah, then I don't know. Then <laughs> don't call it a remake or something. Don't. Drag my expectations to like okay. It's like if I would imagine, uh, imagine like they did a Grandia remake um, or like the the older games, and then it was. I mean, Final Fantasy can afford to do that kind of stuff. But yeah, I yeah. think every other game would have been like damned to hell. Like, <laughs> what kind of experience is that? Um, I mean, it's a testament to how large the original game is. The fact that nowadays, I mean, to be fair, they, I don't want to say they padded out a lot. There was some padding, but also they, they really went deep into some of the actual scenes in the game and the, the locations where it's a place you would usually like spend 10 minutes in, you now spend half an, half an hour in. But I, I felt it was meaningful. Like it was, I, I didn't feel there was too much padding. Um, but just the fact that, yeah, this is just, yeah, we now got out of Midgar and, uh, well, there's, there's a whole lot in front of us still um that just to me says like oh my god this game really was huge back in the day which yeah. i I've, i have a feeling i mean when i remember back back in the day video games i used to i th it feels like we used to play a game for like at least a month yeah. like any game and then you have something like final fantasy 7 where it feels like we played that for half a year which obviously we didn't but it feels like that and uh it was just a a huge game yeah but now and that that's it now where i have my problem it felt like you played like for half a year probably summer vacation or something like that the remake you played for two days and you only got to experience like just but i think that, that there's there's two very important factors here which is a back in the day when i originally played final fantasy 7 i was a stupid teenager Whereas yeah. now it's like you know the kind of game mechanics that a game throws at you, and you're like, it's 
kind of easier to pass like what to do next and where to go and like how to be the thing like that kind of stuff mm. that's just a lot easier now and kind of sort of related to that it's like the games are a little bit more linear which final fantasy 7 remake was it was um, to be fair final fantasy 7 the first act was just as linear in the original but there's just it's not that open world like the kind of experience you would have with breath of the wild where it's just like here go go nuts go anywhere um, it kind of led you through these uh, set pieces, so that's also what makes it feel like, okay, now we do this next, now we do do this next, whereas in Final Fantasy VII back in the day, it's like, okay, what am I going to do now? Oh, I'm going to breed some chocobos, I'm going to go play in the gold saucer, I'm going to just grind on this beach, because I know there's this item that I, that I can get, right? And you wouldn't, you would have to fight, figure that out, whereas nowadays you just like take the shortest route to your destination nowadays you can't even do that because it's not in the game <laughs> case closed case closed <laughs> did you get all the summons there were no summons Me. what did you... the the remake did, did you get all the stuff like did you do all the battle simulator battles Oh no, sorry, no, that's not story content so it doesn't exist for you what what would I do that for? <laughs> If the game ends and I don't even know if I can take my my progress with me, why would I even? Spend... Because you, because there's fun in doing things. Because it's you're not on about a challenge. Yeah, it's not about the destination. No, it's like it's like when you when you <laughs> go. The friends you made along. Welcome the way. to the controversial hour of the stream. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, Mario Odyssey next. <laughs> <laughs> not not this game of the year. No, no. The thing is, yeah. Again, like I I would do all that if i know like okay there's this hidden secret final boss that gives me like the best sword of anything like every other good rpg kind of has that kind of thing where you have yeah like... but yeah, but but when you when you say that isn't like aren't those summons kind of the hidden bosses sort of yeah because i mean we don't have the the what is it what are they called again in, in german i think they were called the weapons i don't know whether that's the name in the uh so the yeah, ultima yeah the ultimas um like you didn't have any of those yet because that wouldn't make sense so yeah i think that's kind of what they did they they put the sums in for those yeah i think if it would be bells. it would be a get if it was wasn't a remake if it wasn't clear that there would be something like 90 percent, 99 percent of the game still in the future well to be fair they did say that it was just going to be midgar no, I mean, but the problem is that you, I, did, you didn't have you didn't know what how much of the game was Midgar? I, I know <laughs> that there is like 99% of the game still coming. Not 99, no, not 90. 99. The 90. Like 70, right? Uh, somebody in, in chat just says, uh, so I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about these figures, but three to four hours uh, was the... So the, the remake covered the same amount of stuff from the original, where in the origi original it was just three to four hours of a 35 to 50 hour game, which... It's ninety percent. I think it would. Mm, I think it. The thing is, I think Midgard took a little bit longer if you played it for the first time and didn't have a walkthrough. I would say it's closer to eight hours. Okay, but still, there's something coming up. I don't know if I can take my my progress with me. I wouldn't. I don't care. <laughs> I'm I, along for the ride. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> At least they should give like a, a proper release date for the other ones because yeah, that's that. I would. I'd be looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, just hearing yeah. some progress. <sighs> I kind of got that too. <laughs> so I got got a little heated here. Um, <laughs> I didn't I didn't expect Lauvan to be this passionate about it. Oh, to be he, he he has some very controversial opinions on video games. Yeah, controversial in the sense that I have different opinions. So you can also say I have the controversial opinion. No, no, no. You you have. Well, there's there's topics like I I held my I held back when you were talking about Pokemon. Oh, but... yeah, yeah. You don't like that that much. But, um, no, yeah. The the, the um, most, uh, what is it, like, controversial stuff related for me is uh, Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, so I... Uh, Nintendo pulls a lot of shit. Yeah. I, I like I Nintendo mean, games, but Nintendo pulls a lot of shit. For me, it's like, uh, I don't know, like, I've always been a PlayStation kid. And the Nintendo kids that I've met were always kind of annoying because they were really, really passionate about Nintendo. Where I would like say, 
What about Final Fantasy? What about Ratchet and Clank? What about Spyro? those are also good. What about Crash Bandicoot? No, it's more like about the franchises. And Nintendo only had Zelda, Mario, and whatever Nintendo Kirby. has. Kirby. Yeah, it's like Metroid for 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 thirty fifty years. Fire the same, Emblem. The same. It's the same stuff. And for me, it was always like when Donkey I, Kong. When yeah, it's Mario. It's you could have <laughs> Banjo Kazooie. You could have said this, Star Fox. You could have yes. conquer set that list in the nineties. You could have set Castlevania. The, se the same list worked in the nineties. The same list. It hasn't changed ever since then. It's the same list. But it's still good. It doesn't matter. And they make them do fight, different fight, things. Fight. Doesn't matter. <laughs> if 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 I if I would compare like PlayStation stuff with other uh, yeah with a Nintendo kid in school, they were always so irrational. Like also when talking about like. The, the, the RPGs I liked, they were always, always kids' games. But they, they played Mario Sunshine or stuff like that. Paper Mario. I forgot about F Zero, sorry. Same thing. 90s did that. <laughs> Mario Sunshine. <laughs> it's, it, it, I don't know. Like I, I felt always a bit uh, that they. Uh, what is it? Like they. The Mess mit zwei Lemmas. They have a double standard when it comes to, to gaming, kind of like games and stuff like that. Like Nintendo can pull off the most. Yeah, shadiest things with their models. I agree. That's the thing. I agree with you on that. They allow the sales to do some. Some shit that other, other companies would get yeah. a lot more flack for. Like recently it's been. They've gotten a bit more backlash, like on the online stuff, or the recent like online premium subscription or whatever. It's great to see some pushback on there, but in most other cases, yeah, Nintendo allow themselves to do a little bit more shady stuff. No, no, not 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 in that the sense that they are shadier, but they're not much better than the other companies. But they get a lot less, less flack. Yeah. yeah, that's I totally I'm totally on your on your side with and, that. And it's like, but the games are still mostly good. It's like, I can rely on that. Yeah, but but also then, like when I saw video game donkey, <laughs> no no <laughs> coin names, doing like best game of the year and and um, it's Super Mario two. We all know that Mario Odyssey won over Zelda. I thought like okay, no, these kind of oh, again, sorry, uh, these these Nintendo fans when they think that Super Mario is better than Zelda. We're going to have a problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's a good point. Uh, the shadiest things, like showing off Mario's nipples for the first time. Yeah, that that was shady though. But yeah, no, that's kind of like just my experience <laughs> with <laughs> Nintendo fanboys. <laughs> yeah. But can we all Hold agree? The stream, everybody. <laughs> can we all agree that Xbox only has Master Chief? Yeah, I, I don't even know what <laughs> Xbox made appealing in the first place. Uh, the yeah. Sega games. I got the Xbox because it was kind of the continuation of the Sega Dreamcast. Mm. I wanted Jet Set Radio Future and uh, Crazy Taxi and like that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, you had them all, didn't you? But <laughs> but that's also the only Xbox I had. Like Xbox 360, I, I tuned out. I was like, no, that's that's just for shooters. Mm. I'm I'm over shooters. Oh man, we're showing our age. <laughs> 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 I recently watched this whole like I think it was like a five hour documentary on the, the history of the Xbox which was really interesting to be fair um, but watching that I realized why I tuned out around Xbox 360 because it was like oh we're, we're all about online and uh, play with your friends multiplayer shoot each other and at that point I was like nah nah I'm good <laughs> I like the single player experience more Marcel, are you more of a or do you do you also enjoy multiplayer games? Because I mostly hear you talking about single player games. I think. Um, to be quite honest, I think I think multiplayer is a nice is like a nice addition. Extra, but, yeah. Yeah, but but the single player has got to be it has to be solid. Like yeah. it's got to be solid. Like Mario Party, for example. Um, you know, it's it's kind of multiplayer game, but you can also play it alone, which is kind of sad. But uh, <laughs> it, the core game just has to it, it's it's gonna be solid, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pokemon as well. I think it was planned out as a as a multiplayer thing, you know, with all the gotta catch them all and trade and uh, and fight against your friends. Uh, but but if the single game, uh, a single player game, was uh, wasn't as solid, then people wouldn't have liked it as much. Right. Yeah. I'm a Nintendo fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, 
I mean, if Nintendo would have like sticked to games like Golden Sun, I probably would give them more more credit. <laughs> <laughs> Who developed Golden Sun? Was it like I want to say it was Smilebit, but I don't know. No, it was uh, Camelot or something. Camelot. Like that. Yeah, that sounds right. I don't know where my phone is. Ah, oh, there it is. It's set <laughs> playing Mario Party alone. Yeah, that was that was me back in the day when I borrowed like uh, the the bi-weekly, not bi-weekly. Like every two weeks, we we went to the video store to like rent a few video games over the weekend, and then yeah, I got Mario Party and played it by myself. Mario Party Two, played it by myself. I mean, I mean, you gotta <laughs> hand it to Nintendo though. I think. I, I I mean we're all on the same on the same boat here when we say that Nintendo has like uh, when when it comes to graphics Nintendo isn't quite you know up there yeah, with, with everyone else. That's not what makes uh, a game good for me. I honestly don't care about that because yeah. um, because I haven't had as much fun as I had with my Nintendo DS, for example, when I went to school and everyone had a DS. And I had my Mario Party on there, and you could just share it, you know, mm. without everyone else even having Mario Party. Yeah. You could just play together with it. And this was like, you know, unheard of. You you, you just couldn't do that anywhere else. And this this is like the, the most precious thing to me. Yeah, that, that was when I, I think a few years ago, I uh, got back to the DS to play um, Mario Kart. With, uh, oh, yeah, Mario. right. You could play like with with eight other people or something mm -hmm. yeah yeah that was kind of cool <laughs> to just sit on the couch and, and play mario kart it was kind of cool kind it's, of cool. it's still nintendo though it's it's still nintendo <laughs> you hate enjoying it <laughs> it's just you like, just hate enjoying nintendo games nintendo doesn't have silent hill it doesn't have like the the cool they had Resident Evil 4, and actually, back in the day, it was the superior version on the GameCube. Yeah, but what did they do with it? Nothing. Just well, they, they made it. It was a good game. It shifted <laughs> to PlayStation, and then the, since then, forgotten. GameCube, what is this even? <laughs> it was a cube for games. <laughs> GameCube. What kind of name is that? Now one picking apart Nintendo <laughs> in every way he can. Okay, here, here so I'm, I'm gonna throw you one. Here's a freebie. Okay. Uh, I hate how Nintendo is dealing with uh, archiving and making available older games, especially in the... I mean, emulation has been a thing for 20 years, and we're still... Not not we, in a sense, like, we're actually doing it, but we're still buying the same old ROMs for, the for like, almost... Not full price, but, like, for like 5 or $10 a pop, it feels like, uh, yep. for a game... That they most likely also just ripped from some uh, emulator ROM page, as we figured out in the past. So. That would be so funny if you had like a watermark in there. <laughs> that happened. Look it up. It happened. They they like somebody uh, ripped the ROM out of the uh, like emulator on the console, and they saw a watermark in there from somebody else who ripped it from the original. Like <laughs> those things have happened, and so like that's the kind of stuff where it's like. Yeah, your old games are pretty good. You have a good library. We all like it. No questions asked. But don't like don't don't pretend it's it's still worth that much. Come on, come on, guys, and like make me rebuy it on every platform, which is n not something that I'm doing. But I know that it's generally a thing that's problematic. I think. Yeah, that's yeah. that's like also something where I think Nintendo is nuts. When I just think mm -hmm. about that, if I wanted to play Breath of the Wild again. It costs the same as it was released. Yeah, they never lower their prices. What, what that's the that's another thing that they just allow themselves to do, and uh, I think it's annoying. And yeah, they it's they can like, do it. Like, no, they can do it, so they do it. <laughs> that's that's the game they're playing. Just, just imagine, like uh, GTA Five is like been a thing for eight nine years now, hmm. and I mean it's it, it became cheaper. Just imagine how it would look like if Nintendo published that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, got it all out. <laughs> got it all out. We still have viewers, which surprises me. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are not only Nintendo fanboys. It's, I mean, that's what I said. Like, if if you have Nintendo fanboys, they they tend. There to is make... always nuance to these <laughs> things. There's always nuance, and uh, I I like I like having nuance. Not in my school, though. Um, 
totally different question, which I probably copy pasted into this document like an hour ago or two. Uh, what mindset did you have when you got into the industry? Was it like, I want to have fun or like, I want to treat it like a job? And the, bo uh, the question goes to both of you. Well, it's e uh, that's easy for me because it's not my job. <laughs> right. <laughs> is it an, is it kind of? I mean, kind of is. Did, did, did didn't you like uh, have to do the tax stuff and stuff like that? So yeah, ah, you mean with with taxes and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean those were all like um roadblocks that I had to overcome, but it's still just a fun thing for me. Like I could. Mm. Uh, I, I could start any day. I'm not. I'm not uh, dependent yeah. on on the money that I'm getting from it. So, uh, I still treat it with fun. Yeah. I, it's it's not my it's not my main income or something. So I don't care. <laughs> no, I mean that's that's a healthy spot. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, I I just wonder like what what is industry for that? Uh, yeah, what is your industry even? <laughs> um, I mean, it kind of happened like that. It just I, kind of grew organically. It was it was this, this thing where you just you do something that you like, and um, at a certain point you notice, okay, I, I have to probably do taxes and stuff like that. <laughs> and then you think, damn, I, I will have to do that ne again next year, and and there is no end to it now. And then I thought, well, um, I can't really do that as much when I still go to university and when I did the art book at that point I thought well uh, that that could work that at that point it could work to to do that as like a job and that's why I don't really know industry wise it feels just self-employed <laughs> so, um, I, I would probably be excited at one point to call something that I worked for industry in a way so something huge kind of like but on the other hand as far as i've seen like people on twitter talking about that like it, it also sounds very limiting to your own work and then i am not sure <laughs> it's also more it, it should be fun but uh, i also know that certain things what is it like i i like to do it but i also I like to be lazy and then it's also okay to have like some pressure behind you so deadlines and stuff like that even though this is not fun um <laughs> thinking about like things in this next month that is that will not be we have some work ahead of you but you'll manage yeah we believe in you um <laughs> i i'm kind of hesitant to to ask this because <laughs> I don't want to flare up a conversation like that again. <laughs> <laughs> but are you guys getting a PS5? If I I haven't even seen one in real life yeah, yet. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I am a PlayStation. <laughs> uh, no, I, since uh, yeah, since my gamer beginnings, uh, I I was always uh, what is it like um, toy, and devoted mm. or something like to PlayStation so loyal loyal yeah, yeah i was loyal but uh, I, I also wanted to play the ratchet and clank when it came out um, but ever since that i've never seen like a way to get one so <laughs> the thing is the thing is um a good friend of mine um he he pre-ordered like everywhere he could and most of them declined his pre-orders but two of them but but two stores actually uh did manage to get his pre-order through so he got two ps5s and he mm. asked me if i wanted one and i said nah i'll just get it in <laughs> <or something." laughs> oh yeah so but but i don't need one yet to be honest same. so like yeah, Elden Ring, for example i'll just play on pc I, i'll play yeah. most of my of the stuff i i want or that interests me on pc actually so um I'm I'm still good I'm still good with playing stuff on PC, but when the new Final Fantasy remake comes out in twenty oh, oh maybe that that would be <laughs> yeah that might be the game where we need the PS5 for unless we want to wait yeah, yeah, another that, year that for it. That was my thought as well, yeah. but maybe that's gonna be on PlayStation Six when it comes out <laughs> time. Yeah, yeah. Oh god. Yeah. And you all. But for a spoken looks 
you all or said Forsaken or whatever looks really good that's going to be on PS5. And you you said that that the the Final Fantasy remake that we got was enough. It wasn't enough. <laughs> I like what we got and it was high quality. They could have given yep. us more at lower quality and I wouldn't have been as happy with that. I don't know. Agreed. I'm a patient Agreed. gamer. I don't I don't want I don't want our game developers to crunch. Are they yeah, going I'm to like, do that anyway? Right? Don't not crunch as much then. They are going to do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Still, there there will never be uh, no crunch under the capitalism. Isn't Crunch a Crash Bandicoot character? It is. Oh. <laughs> or was it Crush? No, it was Crunch, right? I think it was Crunch. I'm I'm gonna have. A... Oh no! It, it was Crash. It was the main character. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right. Uh, how, how could we mix that up? <laughs> oh no, there yeah. is Crunch, and he looks like every Barra Furry stream. Yeah. That, that's... <laughs> I need to look that up. Crunch. You'll know what I mean. Crunch Bandicoot. He's from the uh, Wrath of Cort the, the, the one of P on PS2, the first one. I've seen yeah, that. yeah, Wrath of Cortex. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that like, like. He looks like <laughs> he looks like he's drawn. Uh, he's just like a, like a <laughs> like like a fan version of some deviant art artists. Yeah, like, makes, son, like he looks like a Sonic OC. For Crash Bandicoot. Like the original model from the game looks a bit like a Sonic OC. It's probably the yeah. I don't know what it is the nose. No, they all have that nose. Why do they all have that nose? I noticed that again when we were playing Gartic Phone, like Sonic and Crash Bandicoot have the same nose. Doesn't Mickey Mouse also have the same nose? I don't know. Never paid attention to that. <laughs> I tend yeah, to not yeah. look Mickey in the eyes, you I know. I think he does, I think he does. <laughs> By the way, like, back to like an art-related topic. Oh yes, sure, How yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Yeah, like right. that's what I we're doing. He's, he's painting there, yeah. um, what, like, at which point, um, or, or better said, how much uh, are you going to render this one out? Are you still going to use? Uh, are you going to render this uh, this out more when you get your hands on colored pencils, like later on or tomorrow? He, or he's are you asking, leave it at that? He's asking when we stop in the stream and he can go. <laughs> no, I, that was not, that was not the question. <laughs> In um. Yeah, it's uh, at this point. I probably would, if I would do it or continue it on uh, off stream, my my head would be like this uh, on the paper. Um, so it's just get out the magnifying glass. Yeah, rough uh, <laughs> work um, in in effort to uh, sometimes look on the screen and think, okay, does does it look like? All right or not? Or but, by the way, one tip: uh, when you look over to the screen, at the same time lean over to your right so you remain in the uh, vicinity of your microphone. That helps. A little uh, bit. Okay, yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah, that that helps a bit. Uh, yeah, no, but uh, yeah, it, 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 the, that's the thing. It could continue like this for hours. So. I, I need a quick break, by the way. Yeah, just me. I mean, I think. Yeah, but that's that's just the thing, right? You could render this for for like forever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, it, at certain points, um, I just think like, okay, um, that's the, where last year when I did the angel drawing thing with the um, golden foil, I think that was on stream, wasn't it? Um, at that point, that made me like stop <laughs> because I thought, okay. There's glue on the paper. I can't continue like that. Um, but no, for for usual processes, it's like the the other drawing where I uh, wondered if the head was too big. It's it has kind of like the same uh, vibe. Where I just could work on it endlessly. That's why the face looked like it did because I just spent quite some time on that. <laughs> I I believe that. <laughs> I believe that. Look, like like the face was like. Uh, more rendered than the rest of the body, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, there was, especially in, in, the, uh, in like um, 
a mindset where I wanted to have like this expression kind of thing where it's like mm -hmm. not just the smile but like a more kind of like badass look um, so my focus went all there and then it, when that was done I was also not really interested anymore <laughs> oh ouch <laughs> and it's, here it's kind of like uh, yeah the challenge is still for me is will be the background that one is um that thing where I struggle a lot with when I have no line out there. Um, that can become quite tricky. Uh, yeah, tri but you think so? Because I think uh, drawing drawing the background or, or painting the background this way, um, that's like the most the most uh, the most freedom you could have. Like because like this you could you could still make anything without being restricted. It, it should be. Yeah, I, I agree. It should be. <laughs> but for me, it's kind of like the the things that i don't have under my control like this flowing thing um where i have most like troubles letting go it's probably something that came from like that um the way that i did the life is strange paintings uh, like the digital mm -hmm. things or that that mm -hmm. should or were supposed to look digital there you can't really allow anything to flow out of where it should be because it would take the illusion of for example like that the camera has blurred something if it's oh yeah i get what you mean so it needs to look perfect yeah, yeah you have to put an exact stop to where the flow starts and where the other color ends and um yeah. that of course i mean i had like my my reference like the uh, life is strange for example was the digital one that i painted before i did the artwork it was mm -hmm. kind of the way because I co copied, like, uh, before I did these, uh, I copied Loish, Sakimichan, uh, and Ilya Kushinov. Like, I had three artists where I did these paintings and, and recreated them with watercolor. And then I thought I, I'd do, like, one of, a few of my own, like, digital works in watercolor. And um, so I had, like, a clear picture of what it should look like. So there were no ways where I think, like, okay, I can allow there to be freedom <laughs> because I knew what it looked like. And right now this one has no real concept. Like I have the thumbnail a bit next to me. <laughs> so it's not false. Like it's not clickbait. <laughs> does does look like the, the digital thumbnail. But yeah. But the... that's also the thing with watercolor, right? You need to plan it out exactly in beforehand, right? I think it's really depending on style. I, I would assume that, uh, yeah, some artists can do it very freely. Like they, uh, and that's something I admire. There's like that one artist on uh, YouTube. Um, I think it's a Korean one. Let me. Oh, how was it called? She, was she? Called? I think you know. I, I think I know who you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like she does also gouache and and stuff like that. And it's like. It looks really effortless. It looks so, yeah, on point. And you just see every single brush stroke, and they are like planted all over the place, and it becomes a picture. And um, it's something where I also would love to go because you are far quicker. I think you, you, mm -hmm. you, the, the speed goes up way higher than like I'm doing right now. <laughs> Um, if, if I would be able like, to just make uh, trees with a few brush strokes, then these streams would be kind of like become very quick. But yeah, it's the same with when I did the portraits. I, I wanted to have also more like the rougher ones, like the ones where you have only a few brush strokes and this, it's a convincible shading. Um, also, like an art style that I admire in a way. <laughs> so. Yeah, can't have everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I mean, you you still fluctuate in art styles a bit. So when you say can't have everything, you can still try out new stuff. I mean, you're right now you're you're going in the manga anime kind of direction, but you're also doing like portraits. So you can try out new stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it's. it's uh kind of like when when you start one thing and you go to another thing you there's always something that you take with you 
<laughs> and it's like I did these digital art watercolor like things and something I took from that is control over the flow of the colors and so it's for me really not easy to let go even um, if it's like uh, manga related or like uh, traditional artwork there's always like that thing inside of me that thinks like it could have been look uh, it could have looked better if I just would have thought more about it so when I did like these splatter portraits of uh, girls or like I mean that, that one commission guy that that where the commission didn't uh, end up in this PO box or like came back and they were like the splattery style but I also thought about them on on my computer screen <laughs> like I thought okay there kind of there has to be this color and kind of there has to be that color um, so they, they're quite like structured in a way but I would love to just do a, like a swipe and it looks good <laughs> So also, but I don't think you, you've uh, probably answered the question yet. So after the stream, you're you're probably not going to render anymore, aren't you? I think I might do it. I think I, I might uh, go in there and then in detail, like looking at the overall um, light situation, for example, because I still want him to be a bit darker, just so the oh, background. Uh, yeah, so so uh, the the background is um, lighter than yes. So for me, it's kind of it's, yeah, a bit of what's it called perspective. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> the he uh, pops out the image kind of like that. Mm -hmm. There there are though things where I want to um, go deeper into. That's maybe I, sometimes I'm a a bit lucky when there's like this kind of this bluish tint and then it goes into this greenish one that's yeah. something happened by accident and i would love to be able to control that for everything in this image because now i can see okay where the green is is like front leaves and this is back leaves could have been nice if it was here and here and stuff like that and so you want to have like an exact transition yeah that that looks uh unintentional or intentional unintentional i don't know how to put it but i also want to have this effortless thing going for mm -hmm. it but um, i know that it will take a bit of effort to make it look like that but oh yeah by the way <laughs> is it okay if people make darius fan art uh, of course <laughs> is that was a question in chat yeah yeah no it's it's uh i i'm um yeah, happy for every artwork of my characters or anything actually related to uh, the channel or whatever. Yeah, there you go. Mm. Yeah. I just realized that he's like I'm. I'm so I'm not. A, I'm not a smoker, but I feel like. Like, is it weird to eat a sandwich while smoking? Like, isn't that something you would do one after the other? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the, the um, a short process, a thought process of the image. Like, he's yeah. having um, a break. Um, a double break, it looks a, like. A short break. That's why he's annoyed. So. Ah, okay. So he needs, to, he needs to do both. Yeah, yeah. And that, that was kind did of. Did you did you ever think about what what he's if he's taking a break like what is he taking a break from? <laughs> um, um, uh, is it 10 p.m. yet? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh... I thought like what is he what is is his, like his job his occupation? <laughs> it was. Uh... He, he's an employee at uh, Laovan Inc. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the initial providing services the 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 pro, the, the, the um, thing when I came up with the characters because he, he is just a part of a bunch of other characters and I thought the the setting is kind of like this dystopian thing where they are working in a mine and stuff like that and it the the, the main aspect of it was supposed to be like kind of dramatical murder thing or like those uh, 
harem video games where you like there wasn't supposed you, you to you know the kind of cell. yeah there wasn't supposed to be any like um not say for work action but it was supposed to be hinted in a way that the reader can relate to the main character and just pick any of the boys that was kind of like the concept and he was in a way working in a dungeon <laughs> <laughs> i told you you just used more words to say the same thing i did yeah um and uh yeah this one was something i just came up for the stream so it has no deeper meaning to it i don't yeah, know so i i gotta i gotta say his attire is pretty good for working in, du in a dungeon <laughs> yeah special kind of dungeon okay nintendo dungeon <laughs> pokemon dungeon mining valuable roms <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. Mm. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Oh. Did you play that? Yeah. Oh, no, it was Nintendo. Of course you didn't. <laughs> I, I tried it once, but I, I didn't really enjoy it compared to the, the classical Pokemon gameplay. It was, like, too childish for me. I don't know. Like I, I felt at that point like this teenage I'm... I'm an adult now, so I don't play this Bobby games. <laughs> I think it was too hard for me, to be honest. <laughs> I want harder games. That one is too yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah, but, but that one wasn't hard in the sense of I need good re reflexes. Oh, it was annoying. That hard. one was was too hard in a sense from I'm I'm dumb as a rock and, <laughs> and this requires too much intelligence from me. Would Darius play Dungeons and Dragons? Would he? Why not? I mean, <laughs> would play in Dungeons. Yeah. What, uh, oh. <laughs> what kind of character would he make? Uh, Come on, give us some backstory. We, play? We, 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 want, we, all, we all want some backstory. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. An orc, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I brought up Nintendo and now he's pissed again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you guys ever play pen and paper? I tried it a little bit. Um, I think I was ta too chaotic for our group. Um, okay. I gave it a try and uh, like the it, it was sold to me in a way as like yeah it's like it's not just about like ma like battling and rolling dice, but more about like you, you actually role playing the character. And then so I thought, okay, I'm gonna give you role play. Um, and I and I think I was too frantic and uh, yeah, I, I I think I I think it did for like a few like we played it every two weeks for a few months, and that's where I kind of dropped it. And I was like, nah, I'm, I'm good. Okay, uh, I guess so. I, I have never tried it. Uh... For me, the only uh, the only thing I know about that game is like probably the few episodes of Big Bang Theory I watched. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's <laughs> not that's not re representative. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, but we had like a store I think where you could paint these figures or something like that, and th yeah, that's Warhammer I think. Ah, uh, that was something where I thought, oh, they look nice, but. I probably would rather do these figures myself than just painting them. Um, just a, just a question, like art related again. <laughs> um, if you if you like rewetting, um, for example, the right part of his cheek, um, doesn't that leave like stains if you're just rewetting this single t uh, this single part? Can I answer that? Because I might have. If you yeah. I think <laughs> I think you're right and you have to rewet the whole face. Yeah, y isn't it? Yeah. In y you always have to like the whole area. Yes. Yeah, that's because yeah. It, because he just rewetted the right part doesn't it leave stains? Oh, so he did. Yes, know. it's um <laughs> he, he's got a cheat code. No, it's um, Yeah, that's that's what uh, that's what was confusing He's me right pulling now. the shit right on our nose. Uh, yeah. Hiding in plain sight. No, no, it's it's doing you, matrix shit. You know, nothing escapes my <laughs> eye. You know, it's uh, no, it's um, the face. Explain yourself. The face has been uh, kind of like uh, mm -hmm. what is it called? Like it's set in in a way. So yeah, typically it's in read-only memory. The the safest way is to just 
revet the whole thing and then do the the um, the gradient, whatever the the amount of paint you want to add. Uh, but as this, as I've been over and over and over over this phase, and it has dried completely now, I had like kind of the control that in inside the the bristles of the brush up here is more humidity than down here so i i could like kind of yeah wet it without really having everything to wet again so we're now getting into humidity micromanaging yeah kind of so so it's like, yeah that's uh, but it also i think that's a bit too next level <laughs> <laughs> it also works more or less because like the the paint here is hard to you have to really push uh, the the pigments to to okay just okay then then just another question so so to put it into simpler terms that my monkey brain could understand <laughs> uh, so you're having kind of a transition from wet to not wet. Yeah, yeah. So, so mm, I wonder. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a smooth transition because your your um, your brush is only half wet. Yeah, it's it's not as wet uh, on on uh, the center as it is on the uh, tip, and so I can kind of like drag it. So, if it, if the pigment wouldn't be as set in the paper you would still obviously see the stains that come with revetting the paint but as mm. it's not as much water and as the pigment is kind of hard to lift off at this point anyway uh, yeah you can kind of skip a bit of time revetting everything even though i still would probably recommend it and i, I noticed that there would was some kind of like flex uh, or like stains getting there mm. But then I kind of was lucky that I have like some areas to push these stains towards, so they don't really are as noticeable. But uh, interesting that you caught that. <laughs> yeah, no, I just because because I wouldn't have caught that like a year ago when I uh, had no when I had no experience in watercolor. But right now it's because I've been there. Mm -hmm. I, I've been there. I I, I did that. And it didn't work out for me, and so I was like, "How the hell did you do that? <laughs> Why didn't didn't he get the stainy bits?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So it just you just use less water, and that's and and that minimizes the stain, kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's more or less. Uh, I I want to have it a bit wet, so I can drag the orange into the uh, rest, and um, therefore you need to have it a bit like at least some moisture there so the color can flow mm, but yeah to not reactivate the pigment as i said like it's already kind of like baked into the paper so it's not as uh, probable to lift it off again um, but therefore uh, yeah i just only have the tip a bit moist <laughs> to just moist there it is yeah to, to make it um wet for the orange and the rest stays kind of dry has some some moisture probably left but it's again like not as easy to lift it off mm. and i can can, can look i think the the hand also gets a highlight like that so but okay it's, it mm. yeah to, you just you just use gouache for like the, the very slight highlight on the right side huh? uh, I, I use the the martin's white um yeah but but I, it's like Wash, kind of. I can. I have some. Oh, oh that's <laughs> dusty. Eh? It's a really dusty palette. Um. I mean, I can. I can. Maybe try something. By the way, it just occurred to me that we can just have a poll, and so I asked the chat to pick their favorite between Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, and Sega. Oh, yeah. Sega, yeah. Yeah, totally yeah I was thinking of like the whole, like, Sega used to be a big thing, so I wanted to include that age bracket. Yeah. And the results are on screen. You're not going to like oh, it. Oh, no, Lao you're, one's you're not, not going to like, like that it. one. Ew. <laughs> 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 Nintendo. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, this one is kind of dry, very thick wash paint. Um... I would have loved. Oh, I'm gonna stop this with 69 votes cast. Maybe you can try to. 
will be a bit difficult, but um, the this one, I don't think it's necessarily gouache. But mm -hmm. I'm not sure. The thing is that I rather recommend using the uh, white ink, <laughs> the pen white, uh, over gouache because gouache, at least the ones that I have, the, uh, the white ones turn a bit yellow after drying. But also they are not as covering if you try to thin them down. So if I try to get them at least to a bit of like the same amount of the um, thickness compared to the ink. Um, now I'm now excited to what that amounts to. It's, so for me again, it's I'm just easier to to work with the um, with the Martins. Oh, damn, <laughs> that mic is not as easy placed. But also, that this doesn't usually happen. I don't know what this is. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to say <laughs> that it's not as opaque as I thought it was. Uh, now we have the Martins white. And there is like also a huge difference in like the thickness so you can really go thin usually where i've seen the martins white used a lot is western comics where you have like this deep dark black shading like batman oh, with oh, yeah. the and they do like these uh white outs with like the i can zoom in, like they, they they shade with the white ink into the black mm -hmm. And they usually also use this kind of paint. Um, so the yeah, I um, the thing is, I I use gouache a lot. Maybe I'm if, if you if you got some free time after that, just send me the link on that because I'm mm -hmm. always interested in like new art supplies so that I that I know I want that I know I need. But I um, but uh, that kind of stuff I actually do more with my gel gel pen mm -hmm. because it I think it's a lot more precise than that. That yeah depends on your brushwork. So with this Martin's white, at least I I was able to basically just do anything, correct anything. The only problem, and I know that you are like you said you are not really caring that much for it, is when you have this paint dried down, it looks very um, matte, 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 matte. Matt. Matt. That's uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I, for example, I have draw, or I've had drawings where I screwed up like a corner, or I wanted to have like some white overlapping and just do like some uh, strokes, like white strokes here and there. Um, you can see that, you can tell that directly. And it's like, for me, for the original, it doesn't look as good as if it would be the white of the paper because you can always spot it in a way. But if you do like manga drawing, traditional manga art, I think this one is the best to just like do the panels correctly or just use it for any kind of like corrective work because it's. You can... So you're basically saying the best white out is not making any mistakes at all. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of became a meme uh, in other streams because I'm always like, since I have had that, it's like the, the secret weapon in a way. Um, and we always make, have made jokes that uh, they should sponsor. <laughs> uh, never did though. Um, but it's really something that I can recommend because it's uh, I, I use it really a lot. I have also like a backup, or at least that is a backup. I have another one. <laughs> because for, tra for traditional art, it's great. And also, if you ever consider to buy an airbrush or something, it also works with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think that. <laughs> Uh, anytime soon but i saw some like nashi for example she uses airbrush is quite good yeah i mean it's, it's uh a lot of effort to to use the foil or whatever you want to use to cover what you don't want to spray on but um it it, it can help quite a bit um especially for subtle shifts i've used it uh, in the past um for example on a drawing like this, I could go in and kind of like using a multiply layer, 
um, uh, cut this thing out like screen tone, uh, like you would with screen tone, and then spray the face with like a subtle, maybe orangey hue, and then mm -hmm. create a transition like from from here and this, leave this side a bit lighter, and then. I don't know what it is like. If you would do it in digital art, it wouldn't look as impressive or something. But with yeah, traditional yeah, art, <laughs> I, what I said before, right? That if you if you had this like one original piece where you did that, that that would be so much more impressive. Yeah, yeah. I, I also don't know why it is that way, but <laughs> I, I I don't know because in with digital art, I wouldn't think that using a layer with multiply would be enough to have an amazing painting or have like a nice addition to something on your drawing but uh yeah that, that's something where you could use like an airbrush it doesn't have to look like these 90s space images or something like that that I mean, can be useful but i i had ha, have had an airbrush i think in 2013 or something <laughs> um because they were like there was an offer uh, for i think a hundred euro or something and um, yeah, I've used it for cosplays most. <laughs> oh, okay. Speaking of cosplays, are you are you planning to cosplay anytime soon? Probably not. I, I'm. I, sometimes I wish I, I would have like had the dedication to to do it again. The time. The time. Also. I wish I had the time. But I also wouldn't know what character. That that's. So so with cosplay, I, I have to say. <laughs> That even if, if uh, I think uh, most people don't like to admit it, uh, or uh, maybe I'm projecting, but um, that... Link... Oh, can you zoom out a little? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, that, that Link cosplay I did kind of set like... A very high bar? Yeah, for <laughs> where I did like the Final Fantasy cosplay afterwards and that was so much work and had so little like attention yeah wouldn't be recognized at conventions like the photos weren't really working and so i thought oh okay i'm, I'm not sure because yeah that's a shame but but i think it, because like just as you said it, it looked pretty good so yeah it, it has set a very high standard huh yeah yeah at least for like the also how i perceive like the the value of the cosplay i guess so you, you kind of like it, it's like with a picture when you post it and it doesn't get like the attention that the previous one did then you kind of even if you don't really try to to get it to you but sometimes i mean it happens to me that it's like okay that that other one is might be better and i know like, in the end it doesn't really count because for example if you only rely on like the amount of uh, likes a picture has for example, if you want to print something, that often doesn't really work. <laughs> That's also yeah, something yeah. I noticed. Um, but yeah, with cosplays, it's as as there is nothing else to do with it other than to wear it on a convention or to have like photos shot with it. It's a lot of effort if these photos don't really get like the feedback. I'm not sure. And then also mm -hmm. like I did like the Jack Frost cosplay just with like a blue hoodie. And, didn't take any effort <laughs> and just because well you had to dye your hair yeah but that you was, you that did, was you did that you did that you did that anyway but that had to be done at some yeah, point but, but at, at that point still you just think like okay it's it's also depending a lot on the character and if the character isn't really that uh, so so for example if i would cosplay i probably would go uh, or ha would have to go for maybe genshin impact characters or something like that for the effort to be worth like the the attention whatever <laughs> or i yeah maybe if i if i find like a character that i'm really into in the future then I can see it again but darius yeah of course of course <laughs> but but uh Marcel, you, you you wanted to cosplay Aaron Jäger on, on Dokumia. <laughs> uh honestly like Right now, my hair is getting to that length, and I'm kind of surprised on how how good this hairstyle lets it sound. How how good you can replicate that hairstyle? Mm. To be honest, I thought it would be a lot a lot more difficult. To be honest, it, all it needs is uh, like an hakumi. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, but also it 
I mean, there's like in my head, I I've got like two or three characters that I know. Okay, I kind of look like that. I could pull that off, but um, yeah, maybe even to maybe even to uh, Leipziger Buchfair, maybe even that works out. I I don't quite know yet. I know this question. Uh, I know the answer already, but uh, will you take pictures? <laughs> <laughs> Will you take a Nintendo console? Uh, only, <laughs> only if it's free. But he, here's the thing. I mean, okay, so, so you said you, you're going to do the hairstyle like that, not not with a wig, but uh, like you probably have to wear a mask anyway, so you might as well take a picture because I'm from experience, if you're in a cosplay, you're like totally not recognizable, especially if you have to wear a mask of some kind. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not in a cosplay. I'm just <laughs> wearing different stuff. <laughs> I'm just wearing like like a different shirt and that's the cosplay <laughs> you have some time left maybe the the sawing swing machine you can be so. crafty yeah yeah no but but for for being aaron jaeger you just need you just need a different shirt and longer hand <laughs> and then that's not i think you could recognize me pretty good <laughs> yeah i uh think you could also do like the uh what is it like the outfits of of the what are they called again the hunters of the titans i don't remember yeah, like the uniform stuff <laughs> uniform? <laughs> the chat will let you know in about 10 seconds yeah i'm not sure <laughs> I, I didn't get it like uh acoustically what um the um, the gear the gear that they're using yeah um, oh like the 3d maneuver gear yes Manu yeah yeah, yeah. The, the, there was something like a timeline where this was the hottest all the stuff on conventions. Yeah, that's been like around 10 years ago when Attack on Titan aired. <laughs> 2012, I think. Oh, damn, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I think like uh, Naruto is really retro, but then I uh, yeah, realized that Attack on Titan is also retro. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of... Uh, Attack on Titan was at one point the new thing, huh? Yeah. Mm. Damn. Sometimes I, in my mind, kind of, I think Attack on Titan is as new as My Hero Academia, but there's like five years in, in difference. Yeah, and My Hero Academia, it's already also old. Like, I remember yeah. the first time I, I heard about it was like doing a Patreon commission. And yeah, I mean, then that that was, it's still like in the 2017 art book, that picture. So it's five years at least, I think. Yeah, uh, the first time I heard about it was, I think, 2014 or 15, when it was, like, incredibly new. Wow. It hasn't even had an anime at this point. It's, it's always funny for me, because my brother bought, like, the manga books, and it's like, uh, when am I going to read it? I'm not sure. And then, then I asked my brother, like, is it worth it? Nah. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, to be honest... I already said this like tons of times. I think my hero is like okay, but it's not. It's not like it's uh, doing something new. Or... Yeah, it's it's not like rev revolutionary or something. Uh. It picks up the formula that's already existing and like plays the same tunes on it. I, it's nothing. It's nothing mind blowing to me. The only mind blowing thing to me in my hero is in the recent chapters is the artwork. Mm, that that's sounds... like have you have you seen like uh, Horikoshi's uh, like big pans or big double spreads like they're amazing. I, I've only seen like I think the four uh, uh, first what is the the ersten vier Bänder the first the first four, four issues four, yeah first four issues oh damn <laughs> <laughs> it's we're getting we're now in the fourth hour. Oh. Um, no, we're not in the fourth hour. We're now entering the fifth hour, actually. So, oh, um, yeah, it's 10, yeah, yeah, it's 10 yeah. p.m. Yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, we can talk about Darius. Art, it's, oh. it's, it's like <laughs> incredible. I, I, I can. I, I've seen like artworks on Twitter. I think like when uh, some stuff gets reposted or something like that. And I thought. Yeah, like, but, but are you talking about like uh, actual manga pants or? Yeah, more like these illustrations, like I think chapter illustrations. I'm not sure. But they... Yeah, but I, I don't think they hold a candle to what the manga actually looks like at the moment because I, it, it looks genuinely really good. Mm. 
So is it worth starting with my view academia? <laughs> For the art alone? Uh, I I think it, it it's it's a thing that I I noticed with a lot of shonen anime and manga, ma mine included, by the way. <laughs> um, I think the first chapters are always pretty boring. It's, oh, yeah. it's always because it's always the same formula, always the same structures that get repeated again and again. And then when this, uh, when the, um, when the series comes into its own, like if, if it does something unique, then it's worth picking up. When with my hero, I think it's like the third arc where I was like, okay, that's that's pretty cool. I like that. Mm. Hey, have you uh, seen or watched Steins Gate? Uh I did not. People, I, I had pretty um, polarizing uh, uh, opinions <laughs> on this. Some people say it's like mind blowing, and some people say it's like incredibly pretentious. That's why I didn't touch it yet. Okay. It's so both. it's both. It's a bit of both. <laughs> the pretentious part also. So for the first eight to ten episodes, I was not on board, but then it kicks into it's gear, fine. and that's where I started enjoying it. Like it really, it, it? It, it's 30 episodes, 25, 25, 25 episodes. And it took, took a good third of that for me to get into like what they're actually doing. Like it makes sense. Once you get past that point, it's like, oh, okay, this, this was important. But up to that point, you think, oh, this is just a Harui Suzumiya with extra steps. Yeah, I did. That's, that's my problem. I'm always, I'm always scared of wasting my time. Yeah. On the... you, you need to, so this one you really need to stick with um it doesn't make sense until like the eighth or tenth episode i don't remember which one exactly but that's where it starts making sense and that's where it got fun for me um yeah, but i also i, I, I also so en I, I enjoy this mind bendy time stuff like i enjoyed tenet and i know a lot of people who did not enjoy tenet okay maybe yeah but but i think our tastes are kind of similar so i I would give it a shot if I mm -hmm. had the time to sometime. Right now, I'm actually, I, it's kind of weird because I, I didn't watch movies for like years. Mm. So so now, like for the last couple of a couple of months, I started watching movies that I that I needed to catch up on. Like, for example, the Sonic movie. Mm -hmm. And I think the best one I've watched yet was, uh, was Parasite, actually. Mm. That was pretty good. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Not just free. It was fantastic. I like that. Yeah, I, like I give movie. it like a solid nine out of ten. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, this this was like totally unexpected, but I I loved every second of it. I I wish I I could watch it like again without knowing <laughs> the big twist of it. Yeah. And yeah. I and, and the, the cinematography and was, the was great. Time, it was the first time as well where I went to my dad and I recommended it to him and he usually never watches the stuff I'm recommending <laughs> to him. And this was the, like the very first one he's actually been watching and he actually liked, which was like a big milestone for <laughs> me, which also confirms how good this movie actually is. Yeah, it was really fun to watch that. Can I recommend oh, Old Boy or have you already seen that? When, when did you watch it? Um, the the original old boy, not the remake. Yeah, yeah. Have you have you watched that? Um, I. That's another thing. Because I, I would recommend it if you haven't. <laughs> I I haven't. I I bought the Blu-ray like yeah. two years ago, and I always wanted to watch it because it's like legendary with its choreography. Yeah. yeah. But I never managed to, and it's my Blu-ray is still lying ar laying around here, <laughs> and I know it's gonna be good, and that's why I'm uh, I'm still delaying that. Okay. I'm procrastinating. Okay. But it's good. You're gonna enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that I am. But that's why I'm <laughs> I'm I need a special time to watch this. That's true. That's true. There's there's a kind of movies and especially old boy knowing what happens in there, like you need to be in the right mindset. Like there's a few yep. movies that I really enjoy that are really miserable. They're good movies, but they're miserable. And I don't know if I'm ever gonna be in the same mood again to watch those. Um. But no, not saying that this one makes you feel miserable, but like it, like there's there's a certain direction of movies where I'm like, I'm gonna feel like shit when I've when I've watched this again because it's yeah, it's I miserable, but it's good. There's, there's like one movie, like you know the ones that that you don't watch because they're gonna destroy you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that kind of stuff. 
Yeah, there, there's one movie that everyone's been talking about for a while, and I know it's gonna destroy me, and that's why I'm, I'm never gonna touch that movie anytime. Um, it's it's like, uh, what was it called? Like this this, this Shiba Inu dog in Japan. Hachiko. Hachiko. Mm. Yeah, Hachiko. I'm not I'm not touching that one. This is gonna, it's gonna <laughs> destroy me. I know that for sure. Yeah, I, I have to admit that I, I watched it once. And, I, and you laughed. I cried. No. <laughs> you laughed. No, I didn't watch it. <laughs> and, uh, I just, I uh, uh, honestly, it kind of was like, can, can we get over this now? <laughs> <laughs> can we speed this up a little? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of was like, I, I'm. I think dogs are cute and all, but it, 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 like for a movie at this point, I, I, it, I, I kind of was bored. I was like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're like watching the Titanic and you're like, die already, my god. Can we have god. a second iceberg? Can we yeah, like can double we tap this? <laughs> can we get this over with? No, ship sinks this slowly. <laughs> Come on, die. Yeah, th at that point, I, I was like uh, an ice block. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah. yeah. Okay. You good? I, I think I'm good. I probably will finish that another day. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I like how, how subtle you, you shaded the hand right there. You, I can see the transition at the knuckle, kind of, but at the rest, it's like completely smooth. I like that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I, I want to have the orange hue and I could do it more prominently there. But uh, yeah, then I also enjoyed it's, I enjoyed this. It's, it's also thing. so insane how personal your color palette is, isn't it? Because your skin tones are so like unique to you. It's always this orange, yellowish tint. It's it's immediately recognizable. That you drew there, that. There's a bit there's a bit of a camera color correction thing going on here, which I didn't quite tune in perfectly, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but but I still think it comes through. Yeah, it's, it's a bit oversaturated, but yeah, this, I would I would love to to uh, yeah take it, but I also think it's basically probably the the uh, in the hand of the premixed skin tone I use. <laughs> okay. So it's uh, I mean yeah the the uh, shadows and stuff like that. There there is um, some tweaks in there, like uh, sometimes brown, sometimes violet, sometimes. Blue when I when thing. I started to uh, when I started to start with watercolors, I uh, I was so fascinated that you could basically shade with any color, the exact same way. That's why. Oh, right there on the cheek, uh, the um, this artwork, right there on the cheek is this um, uh, diffuse. No, it wasn't called diffuse lighting. Like the, the reddish part when it transitions. This uh, this yeah. <laughs> Yeah, on the right side, yeah. you have like it's it's always like this this little red ish. Yeah, is it yeah. color diffusing? Subsurface, subsurface scattering. Scattering, yeah. scattering, yeah, yeah. The the the, the orangey high saturated yeah, yeah, part. Yeah, mm. oh, I, oh, love, I that. love that. Yeah, I love that as well. <laughs> it's something where you think like with skin, you can't really do much with the colors. Yeah, you can add violet for shadows, uh, but. If you go to saturated at certain points, you just think like, okay, it's going to look like uh, skin disease or something like that. But the subsurface, get too, you also can't get too crazy with it because then it looks weird. Yeah, yeah, and with the scattering, you have like the minor chances to go a bit crazy and maybe use a red or like a blue tone or stuff are like you, that. Are you doing the subsurface scattering with like pure red, or are you going in with orange? Usually orange. There's like this one color that's called transparent orange, and uh, mm -hmm. this one I think that holds up pretty well uh, to like the the Colorex ones. Um, so mm -hmm. it's kind of really vibrant. So I think the camera makes it look <laughs> more vibrant now, but. Uh, it has like this really strong uh, hue to it. Mm -hmm. and so it's yeah, it's, it's like this reddish orange. Yeah, I mean, if I would now um, 
for, for my from my perspective it looks like the absolute standard orange <laughs> like the exact mm. middle ground between red and yellow it's uh yeah really really basic in a way but it has like this kind of power that i really love to use that for for these effects and also as it is transparent you always have like the chance to um kind of uh correct the mistakes so usually I could go in there and, and paint it kind of really, really... It just goes in there, it just does it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can smudge it I mean, out I... and that basically... So... Yeah, but I think it still looks pretty good. I, I But I like the, the high contrast one. The... Uh, you mean like putting it thicker or... <laughs> Uh, what, what do you mean by high contrast? Um, at the beginning when you applied it and it was like mm. way too red, I kind of like that. I, th this looked good as well. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, always compromises. <laughs> always. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I also like sometimes this blocky kind of thing where it's like, okay, I want to have it look like I'm really, really brave. Like, yeah, this is a choice. <laughs> <laughs> this is totally intentional <laughs> but then again you, I would have to commit it and do it anywhere else as well and then I think oh, I am too scared for that I, I think I'm going to screw that up probably but uh, no overall like the uh, orange tones is always like nice so, so you use Colorex for that one right? Uh, for, for that one it was like the, the Schminke uh, one of from the pants that that, oh, okay. that that orange is kind of like on its own really really bright um i think probably i'm not sure if i have like an orange from these ones I mean, you can oh yeah there's i mean it's called golden yellow you can have like a comparison for that but i really use them so with the color x one it's like uh Years ago, I uh, got like a mail from uh, one of the. Oh, damn. Okay, there's now some white in there. I mean, it's it's yeah, that's pretty, pretty vibrant. Yeah, but also it's kind of close to to this one. Um, but yeah, they, they were uh, kind of nice. <laughs> they, they sent me like some colors. Mm -hmm. uh, even when I said like, um, I, I'm not sure if, if it's like, if it's going to be used in a way that it's worth it, but send it anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> Sometimes I just, yeah, mention it. Because I think they have their purpose, but it's like for, um, effects more than for doing a painting like that or maybe if you are like more in the expressive area where you want to just vibrant colors all right then <sighs> yeah oh, bottom line nintendo's the best <laughs> according to our chat <laughs> yeah according to them <laughs> my, my opinion differs. But when they join the Discord server, they got to play by different rules. <laughs> we, we should ask the question, uh, which fans are more sympathetic? Like, is it, is it, or what, what? I would like to close this stream <laughs> on a high note, <laughs> on a positive note. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Marcel, is there anything you want to plug? Yeah. Uh, um... Well, I did. I did release a new art book. Um, mm. So yeah, maybe that. Or if you if you're interested in drawing yourself, uh, if you if you want to <laughs> make watercolor mm. art that's not as high level as this, <laughs> I've made a basic yeah. video. There's basic stuff, so you can check out that. But other than that, I I don't need to plug anything because I I always enjoy talking to you guys. So yeah, that mm. that's enough. That's enough. Um, that's enough for me. Yeah. Well, if people do want to check it out, um, you can basically really click on the title of this stream of the video. Yeah. I've learned that now you can like yeah. add hyperlinks in there, so you can directly go to Draw Like a Sir, 
Um, if you speak German, you can also check out Drawing Like a Sir, the <laughs> yeah, progressive exactly. form, um, and then that's that's where you get the German version. Yeah, twist. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and hey, I'm, I'm also in the art book of uh, Marcel, so... Yeah, right, <laughs> right. We did, he did, uh, Lauvan and I did like a collaboration thingy, and I... Honestly, you were, I, I don't know if I told you this yet, but you were like the first collaboration I did in this art book. Nice. I, I mean, I <laughs> I kind of suspected it because I, I thought when we started, then uh, it would be more like streamlined and, and we yep. went back and forth thinking what we could do. But yeah, that's very, very nice. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, I, I also have to kind of get back to, to the art book thing because that's something I kind of like put aside because, I mean, we wanted to do like a collaboration work, like another one. Uh, and yeah, that, that never came up in my head again because of the uh, other stuff that, that was like in my head. But um, yeah, anytime. I'm, I'm there anytime if, oh. if you actually need this. Cameras out. That's that's a sign. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. too, too hot again. Yeah. Uh, okay. In that case, yeah. thank you all for tuning in. Thank you. That very was a lot of fun. I'm gonna post the link to uh, our Discord server one more time. And, and thank you again, Marcel, or Draw Like a Sir, <laughs> for. Uh, <laughs> thank you for being, having me. Thank you for having me. Uh, for being my guest. And um, yeah. All right. The, the, the end things are always a bit awkward. <laughs> yes. Um, for those, uh, there, there's been plenty of questions earlier about like the, the Etsy shop. So the Etsy shop will return at some point. It's not closed for good. It's yeah. just, it's only open for brief periods of time to collect orders and then do yeah. them all in one fell swoop. Um, so just keep your eyes on his Instagram or Twitter or join the Discord server and you will, you will find out when the Etsy shop opens back up. We do worldwide shipping. Um, until then, yeah, stay tuned for some more videos and mm. possibly more streams, some of which happen on Twitch. This was actually more of an exception here that we're doing it on YouTube again. Um, yeah, kind basically, of like wherever you are, if you search for Lavan, it's probably him. Otherwise, somebody like grabbed the username and is doing shit on there, but yeah. probably not. <laughs> Usually, I just put art then behind it. And then <laughs> yeah, you'll see, you'll see when it's him. <laughs> All right. All right then. Yeah. See you next time. Bye. And, and happy new year, guys. Happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> happy new year. Bye. Bye. Uh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Uh, hang on. Let me close.